What's going on, guys? It's Wells Only. Uh, let me just get it set up here to get this thing in motion. I hope everybody's having a good Sunday. Um, just to let you guys know off the top, this is not going to be any tax advice. You know, no, I, as you guys have probably heard me say numerous times before, uh, I'm not a tax advisor. Nobody in the community is, as far as I know. So the only person that is really capable of giving you tax advice is you. So, you know, read your own tax code or find yourself a tax advisor to help you. But do not seek tax advice on YouTube. Do not. General advice is one thing, specific, useful, whatever is another, right? So just please do not look for that stuff on YouTube because you're not going to get the right information. You need to read what is actually written there because it matters. Otherwise, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be there. So um, just want to start off with that because um, I got a couple questions before. Um, it started asking me if I was going to talk about the Sense Foundation donations and stuff like that and implications. And no, I'm not. Um, it's not my prerogative to advise anybody on their tax matters. Um, we're going to keep it professional and not clickbaity. So please seek the appropriate professionals to help you with, with whatever tax concerns you might have. You know, nobody on the Internet should be helping you with that. Um, so I just wanted to get that out of the way. Because I really didn't think people would think I was going to be over here giving tax advice. <laughs> After I've told people numerous times, nobody should be giving that to you. That's your own That's your own situation. So uh, let me just tidy up these charts, make sure everything is clean. Um, and we'll get right to it. I'm just finishing up the um, today's charts. And I just want to say... Uh, I know everyone saw that series of nukes that came out today. And I've been of the mind that a lot of the things that we've been seeing have been hacks. And today, I think it's pretty clear to everybody now that that was a hack. Because that was 6 million hacks that were paid out. So imagine the amount that was nuked. Right, because none of those stakes were halfway done. None of them, as far as I can remember. All of them were pretty long, and that person took a major L, whoever that is. So, uh, you know, please be cognizant of your private keys, you know, your OPSEC, all of these things that we were always talking about. You know, they matter. Um, you know, you know showing, showing off is cool until it's not. Right. And, and that's an instance in which showing off was not cool for whoever that person was. And they paid the price for showing off and trying to be cool. They were doing something that they shouldn't have been doing. And that's why their wallet got hacked. And I'm, I'm pretty confident that that's what that was, because that was too many hex um, at this point in time um, for it to not be a hack. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, and and that, that I don't I'm not sure if that hex has been sold yet. I was trying to track it, and I'll leave that to the experts. Is all I'll say because it, it got a little hairy for me, and I was just busy with other stuff, so I just let it go. Maybe I'll look again at some other point in time, but it definitely looked like a hack because those were there were transfers involved after uh, the stakes were ended, and that typically means that the wallets are being or the coins are being moved to a wallet which the person can dump and take the fiat or whatever they're doing. So, yeah, pretty crappy for whoever that was. Um, give me a second, guys. I'm almost done here. Just want to make sure I have all of the data that I need before we get going. And, um, yeah, that'll be that. Let me um, get started with some charts. We can take a look at Bitcoin and Ethereum, see what they're doing right now, because uh, I don't know if you guys caught me this morning, but on the Hex Agent stream, I pretty much updated my view and gave everybody an understanding of what my frame of thought was 
with respect to what was currently ha uh, happening with price action um, with respect to Bitcoin and um, Ethereum. So we can get started with that. Um, my charts are done, so we can get into it. Um, and let's do a little roll call real quick. Since people are now joining in, we got about 40 heads. What's up, guys? Thank you guys for joining. Um, let's share this screen and get to it. Um, so let's do a little roll call here. What's going on, Piss and Broke? Uh, see, Chef, what's going on? Children of the, of the Grave, <laughs> the Sapper, what's going on, man? Yeah, Brand's probably in here somewhere hiding around. Uh, Hextronaut, what's going on? Hexander, Donnell, what's going on, brother? AJ Rip City, what's going on, man? AB, what's up? What's going on, Sandy? Epito Jefe, how you doing, man? Mano? Uh, Adam, what's going on? T Bird, what's good? Nas Hex, what's going on, man? Nutmeg, what's up, boy? Uh, Hex Phoenix, what's going on? Pulse Lord, great video, man. Thanks for uh, sending that my way. I, I tweeted that. I'm pretty sure that I got some traction, man. Great video. Uh, Diamond Dad, what's going on, homie? Bit Finesse, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. Everybody always complains about that sound. I can't, I can't, I can't help it. There you go, Valley of Brand. <laughs> what's going on, Valley? Already showing up with the damn donation. What's going on, man? Thanks for coming through. <laughs> Luis, what's going on, brother? <laughs> Walter, what's going on, man? Uh, thank you, everyone, for showing up. Mel Tony, what's going on? Um, Your Excellence, what's going on? Oh, let's see. Pay me hex. What's up, man? Um, all right. I think that's it. What's up, T Don? What's going on, man? Caleb, what's going on? Thomas Turner, welcome. Lo, welcome. Um, Trustless, what's going on? Randy, thank you for coming through, brother. Timothy, what's going on, man? Uh, Hazy is wow, there's more people here than I thought. Uh, identity blocked. There was like a jump here. Big Gunner, what's going on, bro? Um, <laughs> Yeah, yep, yep. Um, this is right. Uh Valley, I didn't see this earlier. But uh, you know, I talked about this, I think, as soon as we hit five cents, because the numbers started getting serious, right? Um, you're talking about millions of dollars for some people. And whoever wallet whoever it was the owner of that wallet just lost six million hex. So, you know, multiply that by eight cents, right? That's a lot of cash. So, whoever that is is going to be sick for a long time. A long freaking time. Um, and this is important. You know, we, we can't, we really cannot talk about this enough. Uh, we talk about this on the chats. We talk about it on the streams. Um, I asked today, uh, I sent a tweet out today. And if you guys could go, go in my profile and find it and reply. Um, and the tweet is asking, what would you guys like me to do uh, videos on just what other topics and stuff? Um, and one of them was OPSEC and security. And, you know, today is one of the reasons why that is one of the probably one of the requests. Right. Because it's very difficult to custody your assets if you're not really technically proficient. Right. And that's the thing. Um when you're oh thank you very much man yo <laughs> people are crazy <laughs> oh thank you for the donation hex or not uh, i appreciate it yeah stake it you know make them pay for it uh thank you desmond i appreciate the donation brother honestly very 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 grateful for you guys uh how do you get hacked good question um so there's a couple ways to get hacked uh what up willie uh you know, and it's and it's just you really have to be careful with your password and your seed phrase and your private keys. Right. Those are three different items. Um, if you lose your password, you're OK if you still have your seed phrase plus your private keys. OK, so if you got two out of three, only those two out of three, you must have. What's going on, Latin America? Thank you for coming through, brother. Um, wow. Okay, so check this out. There's a Pulse Chain Telegram group that is claiming you send them ERC-20s and receive Pulse in three days. So there you go. Right? Hex Squadron, what's up, man? Thanks for coming through. Uh, this is what's going on, right? 
these are the kind of things you need to be aware of. Because, like, I, for example, get added to random Telegram chat groups all the time. And I just leave them automatically. If if you happen to end up in a chat, right, that you don't even know where it came from, and at the top you see report as spam and leave or whatever, right, just something that shouldn't be there because you're typically searching for the groups you're trying to join, right? You're not, you're not being added to groups. So, you know, you shouldn't have that issue. Um, you shouldn't have anything, you know, reflected as report spam reporter spam and leave or leave group or whatever the the warning message is but you get like a little warning message in red telling you you're not really a part of that group that you were added to it and that's the whole point be cognizant of that um let's see here wow how about that look at this so here's a, a good friend of the sapper has bought a Rolex and he said strange people will follow him out of the pub. He sold it. Didn't want to deal with it, right? And and it's all about that offset, right? Always all about that offset. Um, you know, it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Uh wow, thank you, man. Uh appreciate the gesture, guys. I'm I'm just trying to provide value add content, right? There's a lot of a lot of clickbait out there. I think we don't need any more of that. Um Oh, wow. Damn. So there we go. Sometimes you don't even need to be in the know to know. You know, some things just don't make any sense. And that was just one of those things, you know, like nobody's nuking. Like that just was too much hex and it's just, it just didn't make sense. Didn't make sense. Um, so yeah, Diamond Dad, you know, you got to be cognizant of your passwords your private keys and your C phrases, right? If you have multiple wallets, all three matter. Um, and if you lose your password, you're safe. Um, if you don't lose your password or if you lose your password and then you end up losing either a private key or a C phrase, you're screwed because you cannot recover that account. So maintain the private keys and the C phrase with two different things and not the same are very important. Okay. Very, very important. You can you can trash your password because you can always change that, but you cannot change the C phrase or the private keys for for an address once it's created. Uh, and just in a regular made of mass wallet, right? That's all I'm talking about, just a regular wallet. Um, I'm not talking about a hardware wallet or anything like that. So just to be clear. Um, yeah, you got to reach out to the folks that run that show in order to get that answer. I'm not here to talk about Staker app and I'm not a pro in that application either. But uh, they, they, you should reach out to them on Telegram. Um, they're usually quick to respond. So, you know, you shouldn't have an issue finding out the answer to your question there. What's going on, AJ? Uh, thank you for coming through, brother. Um, yep, yeah, there's a lot of social engineering going on too. Uh, it's very true, Valley. Um and sometimes, you know, there's key loggers. Yeah, just I hadn't even read that. Yeah. You know, you click on a link and you think it's phishing or whatever, and it's really just malware, and all of a sudden you got a key logger in your computer. Right. And the next thing you know, uh, they have your password and they don't need you to do anything because you just logged into your MetaMask wallet. And guess what? They now have your password. So they don't need you to even know. They can just access your wallet because they now have your address and they can import it. And that's it, right? Because they can now get the keys. Because if they have a key logger, they clearly have access to your computer, right? So how else would they do that? Um, it's, it's, he had the seed in the drop box. Oh my God. Oh my God. No. No. If you have a drop box or anything like that, you know, just fucking stop. Just, just, Take advice from a person that's old enough to fucking know better. Just, just stop. Just stop using all this internet shit. It's a fucking trap. And there's your case in point. Like, come on. Right? This is, this is your future. This is your financial future. Right? Spending 50, 80 bucks to secure it shouldn't be a big deal. Honestly. Right. Like, think smart. 
you're trying to become a wealthy individual, right? That, that, that requires some different type of thinking. So let's make sure when we're thinking about our futures, we're thinking about how to secure it as well, because we don't want to end up like the gentleman that got his wallet hacked today for six to seven million hex. I counted. It was a lot of hex that got, got uh, stolen from that person. So, you know, please be careful, uh, be mindful, um, practice good security. Um, you know, just please be cognizant, be cognizant. Um, there you go. Uh, shout out to Papa and, Ar and Abra for helping him sink his treasure. You know what I'm saying? Mexicans are always looking to help. So there's no surprise there that he found people willing to help him. Um, yeah, they would have to log your C phrase or your private keys, either or. Um, that's why you need both if you lose your password, because that's the only way to secure it. Um, yeah, it's connected to your Gmail. The Staker app. Yep. Fake made a mask and such. Yep, that's very true. Uh, thank you for coming through, Al Carter. Appreciate you joining, man. Um, aren't key phrases and C phrases the same things? Uh, yeah, I guess. But private keys and C phrases are not. I don't. I'm not familiar with the key phrase term. Private keys is the term that I know, and C phrases is the other term that I know outside of password. And those are three independent things. Um, there you go. You can turn off the ability of people to add you in Telegram. So I didn't know that. I need to, I need to elect that. So there you go. Two people just sent the same thing. Those messages were back to back in the chat. Thank you guys. Uh, so there you go. Settings group and people. So three people back to back contacts and you won't be added to Telegram groups. There you go. I didn't know that. So there we go. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, uh, same here. I'm not, uh, you know, you can walk around with this stuff, right? If if you got that level of respect or whatever, but uh, it's just better to not call attention to yourself. You know what I mean? It's not that serious. You didn't have a fucking Rolex. The fuck you need a Rolex for later on? If, you, if you're still living in that same area, right? Like people have this skewed reality where they're buying shit they don't need before they actually improve their living situation. Right, like move out of the hood first before you buy a Rolex or a Beamer or a Bentley or a Lambo. Right, like if you're living in a squalor, get the fuck out the squalor first. Get a damn house, <laughs> then buy all the other shit that you don't really need. Like you know, upgrade your living situation at least if you're about material crap. Because then if you're about material crap, you're just you're just inviting problems because everybody's about material crap. So. You know, you're just inviting problems, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, getting hacked is a is a fucked up situation. Uh, yeah, if you have a wallet on Coinbase, it's not your wallet. So good luck with that, right? Because they're not. It's not your wallet. They can close you out, shut you out, do whatever they want. They have total control. So yeah. Wow, it's crazy. Um, let's see here. Just going to try to read up through the chats and then just get back to what we're going to talk about to get through this. I don't want it to be like a four-hour stream and stuff. Um, let's see. If you just see, if I have the hexadecimal private key to a specific account, you're still good. So there you go. I didn't know this. If you lose your seed but have the hexadecimal private key to a specific account, you're still good. So I guess one out of two is good if you don't have either of uh, the password or or the seed. The hexadecimal private key is that long string of random characters that doesn't look that look, kind of looks like a wallet address, but it's not because it doesn't start with a zero X. Starts with I don't even remember what. Yeah, you can uh, Google how to find your private keys. Um, I'm not really here to give a tutorial on that. Google it. And you will find it. It's not really hidden. MetaMask has a, a FAQ section, I'm sure. Um, yeah, don't don't have any of your important information in electronic format because you're just inviting trouble. Honestly, you're just inviting trouble. You're just inviting trouble. Um, you really just are inviting trouble. 
that's why this gentleman or this person got hacked. I don't know if it was a guy or a girl, but they had their their private keys and or the information in the Dropbox. And yeah, and Dropbox even has 2FA. 2FA is pointless, right? Because all that stuff is the same. So, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't really think that 2FA is really going to stop anybody from hacking your shit. Because if they can socially engineer you, then irrelevant. Doesn't matter. Um, all right, so here's the answer. Yeah, I don't know the answer because I just don't mess with that stuff. I leave it alone. I'm not out here playing with any of that information. Um, I take what I need and, and that's it. Right? I take it when I need it and, and I don't look at it ever again. So I don't really know. Um, okay, I didn't know that. That's that's good to know. So if you're staked out already, you can still back it up to a hard wallet after the fact. Good to know. I did not know that. Um, so Nate J knows a lot about tech. He says it's very important. I'm still of the frame of mind that if you can get socially engineered, it doesn't really matter what kind of security you have. Um, you're still going to get hacked. So just got to, re- you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to security on the internet, on the, in cyberspace, the last, you know, wall of, the last veil of defense is the user. So if you suck, that's it. It doesn't matter what you got. You can have all the Constantino wire, all the gates, all the fences you want to have. It's not going to change the fact that your ass is about to get hacked because you suck and you don't know what you're doing. So this is why it's important to educate yourself. You really can't find an out, right? Like at the end of the day, in the real world, in order to be successful, you have to be willing to put in work, okay? And that's very, very important. You can't escape that. I'm sorry. You have to know what you're doing because at the end of the day, it's on you. This person lost all their hacks because they played themselves, not because they got hacked, right? <laughs> if you keep information where it's not supposed to be, then you're inviting trouble. That's why you don't keep C phrases, passwords, and, 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 and private keys in a Dropbox or an inbox on your email or you know, in any electronic format in a document saved in your computer. Nowhere. You just don't do that. Because there are such things as scrapers and, you know, you can just do whatever you want when you know how to code. Like, you really just got to understand that. Like, really learn how to use the Internet if you're really going to be in this space because you have to understand what's 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 possible. And I don't think most people really understand. So, you know, really take the time. It's it's important. It's very important. I don't want to sound like I'm giving a lecture, but man, it's 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 worthy uh, you know, I, we've been on for 20 minutes and this is all we've been talking about. So it's very important. Um, yeah. So just in case anybody missed it, uh, let's go up here again. Um, because T bird pointed it out. Uh, I just want to find this message again. And the message is that if you have, Oh no, was it T bird? No, it was Machiavelli that if you have, um, stakes already posted, like, I already have stakes, right? Most of us already have stakes. Um, if you're staked out, you can still back it up into a hard wallet after the fact, right? So I saw somebody asking that question a little later on, so that answers that. Um, yeah, no no such thing. Sorry. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so when you stake your hex, you're staking it from a wallet because that's where it is. What is being said above by Machiavelli is that you can back up that address into a hardware wallet. So you're basically importing it. Um, thank you, Hex Uh, You know, uh, hexagons are great in general. Um, it's just a bunch of people just trying to put out good information, man, because the space needs it. And after the, you know, the past year, right, or the past yeah over the past year i mean like the story goes the the, the what is it called the uh, emperor wears no clothes right and when the tie washes out you see who's naked and that's just what's happened lately um everybody's quiet on twitter you know everybody's hating on hex and it's okay i understand but you were warned so you know whatever what are you gonna do just keep on hating man 
you either get get with it or you get left behind. That's pretty much how it's going down. So it, it's okay. Um, all right, what's going on, Crypto King? What's going on? Uh identity block. Thanks for coming through, my homies. Um, I'm just gonna go on ahead. Limon think I was going on, homie. I'm gonna go on ahead and just get into this. Uh Brazaji, what's going on, bro? Um, you know, I don't wanna keep uh <laughs> That would be nice, right? That would be nice. I don't know where we're at now. Let's see. Eight and a half cents. Um, I saw that wick to 12.1 on Dex Vision. You know somebody had to tell me on about that one. Um, let's see. Yeah, here we go. 12.1369 cents. How about that? How about that? Huh? What are they going to say about that? Boom. How about that? All right? 12.1369 cents. Pretty gangster. Pretty gangster. All right. Let's get to it. So, uh, with Hex, let's just go to the V1. Everything is still on track, right? I showed this guy this chart numerous times before. Um, this bad boy is just doing what it's going to do, right? And all you got to do is sit back and enjoy the ride and just start planning your future because that's all you really got to do because this community is going to be unique in the sense that most people are going to still be around in 10 to 12, 15 years, right? Um, and there's really no telling where the price is going to be at that time and where the world is going to be at that time. Uh, worst case scenario, everybody's poor. Best case scenario, we're all rich as fuck, right? So anything in between is probably just as good as being rich as fuck. So still printing hacks at the end of the day, right? Um, so assuming nothing crazy happens, like a major war, or nuclear war, or whatever, where, you know, internet power goes out and everything goes back to analog, Right? And I don't, I don't know, maybe even still in that case, you can still extract value. I don't know. If you can find an internet connection, I don't see how you can't extract the value. Um, unless the infrastructure just no longer exists, right? Um, you're going to be able to extract the value from this market. Um, and as of now, the breakout is still, you know, in motion, just like it's been since early May. So, you know, just don't forget it. People seem to forget we're in a breakout just because price goes sideways while we've already elevated five, six, seven X doesn't mean anything. You know, price moves how it moves. It doesn't move linearly. And it's important that people understand that because, uh, you know, price does what it has to do, not what you want it to do. And that's just the nature of the beast. And this is why markets are hard. And this is why hex is superior because it allows you to remove yourself from the equation, right? And this is why you don't even have to worry about things like this. What's up, Bree? <laughs> All right? Like, if you're staked out for 15 years, 150 hits is not even going to matter because it's going to keep going. That's something to think about because it's true. $10 potential, well, you know, that's cool, but... I'm pretty sure he knows that this has more potential than that, right? Like, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. But I clearly see that this shit is easily, easily four or five figures. This actually provides economic value. This is not Bitcoin. So I think people need to understand the difference, right? The difference is that this actually does something for your pocket. When you're buying any other coin, you're just buying some fucking coin. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. Like, that's it. Doesn't matter what the tech is behind it. It literally does not matter. I'm sorry. That's a lie. If it mattered, right, people wouldn't be buying dog shit. They would buy only shit that has good tech, right? I think that's pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> This is funny. <laughs> well, look, for me, it's happening by at least the end of the year. Um, and if everything keeps cracking like it's been cracking, and this is what I want to talk about, um, 
you know, today price was looking like they were going to jam it up. And I said it this morning on the Hex Asian stream because we've been going sideways for a long time. And typically when price is going sideways for a long time, that means that the move might not play out like one expects it to. Right. But at the end of the day, the trend is still the trend. Right. And the trend is still down. And that's what matters. So until that changes, right, it looks like we broke the trend for now, right, because that's what this is showing, right? That's how I look at it personally. That's how I look at it because each point that's plotted on the line is literally the closing price, right? So as of now, yesterday's closing price was above that trend line, meaning we, we could potentially be breaking out. Right. But the whole issue here is that we still need to break certain levels before we can actually say that we're back in the bull trend. Right. Because even if we do look at a one month chart, for example. Right. Yeah, we're still bullish because we're still above 2000, but there's still a lot of air between two, five and two. Right. And that's the point. Uh, you got to be cognizant of where your risk is at. And that's all that this that's all that these talks are about, because some people have other coins and these coins are the coins that Hex and Ethe or Ethereum and Bitcoin. These are the coins that really set the tone for the market. Right. So if they're going down, it's important to know that they're going down. Um, and that's why I talk about them. So if you look at the moving averages. Right. Um, let's see what they're telling us. Well, the short term ones, which are the green or blue ones, whatever color you want to call it, I really don't know. Um, they're still pointing downward, right? So that means that the trend is still somewhat bearish, but we are still significantly above, right? The majority of the long term trend ones. And this goes all the way out to 987. So this is 610, 377, 233. And this is 144 uh, period moving average. And this is exponential. All these moving averages are exponential. Oh, thank you, Eminem. I appreciate the. Uh... <laughs> well, that's funny. Uh, I've never heard that one before. Uh, thank you, brother. <laughs> oh, that, that's funny. Uh, thank you. I really don't know what to say to that, but uh, not not my cup of tea. Uh, but yeah, so the moving averages, right? They're they're. Anytime the slope on a long term moving average is flattening like we're seeing here right because what you're seeing is that the fanning effect right and the fanning is just how spread out each moving average is versus the one on its opposite side right when it starts to compress like we have been here right because it was a fanning all the way up until we hit 4200 then it started to compress thereafter Right. So that means that the moving averages are going to start rolling over. And that's what we've been seeing. Right. And we're still getting that compression. So the question then becomes, is 144 going to hold? And if so, what are the short term moving averages going to do? Right. Because then that's the last bastion to hold this bad boy down. Right. If it breaks that, then we're back into anything could happen zone. Because even though anything can happen in between here, we still have resistance here, right? And we still had some selling action going on here, right? And this is why we have this little volume area here, because this was all distribution all through here, right? But now let's break it down just to see it on a granular level, right? Uh, so this is 144 minute bars. And this is right around the breakout, right? So this is 2200 2000 price area, right? And we ran up 2000 bucks basically from there, right? So this was a distribution pattern, right? And this is what we were warning about going back into early March when we were looking at Bitcoin and we saw the same thing that it was doing because it was basically doing the same thing that Ethereum ended up doing. Um, and if you look at the time frame, right, like March, Bitcoin was already kind of in, dis in a distribution pattern as it was, right? Because all of this was just exhaustive moves to the upside to get more people into it so that they can then dump it. Because that's clearly what ended up happening, right? And this is what the sentiment checks were about. And this is why I told you guys that 
the chart is cool, but what really matters ultimately is the psychological ramifications of what is actually being done. Right. And this is why I was able to call the top pretty much to two days. Right. Like I saw that thing on Coinbase go from 100,000 in Bitcoin collateral to 20,000. And I said it live on the Quant Gang stream. That's the top. That's it. Because you don't reduce the value of collateral 5X overnight just because. You just don't do that. So, you know, it's important to understand that. Uh, I got a good question here. Hold on. Could I get hacked if I erase MetaMask wallet from my computer? That's a good question. Let me think about that. If there is no trace of anything MetaMask, then no, you can't get hacked. But there is, if there is a trace of it, then yeah, because then that means that they can find stuff on it, All right? <laughs> you, know, you know, I wish I could for the price, man, because I try and it just doesn't work <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, so let me explain what I do to keep my um, machine somewhat secure. Um, I disconnect it from the internet. I use Ethernet. I don't use Wi-Fi. Um, I name my computer something generic. I don't name it anything special. Um, and you don't even have to turn off your computer, right? You can just literally disconnect it from the internet if you're using if you're using Ethernet, which is what I use. I don't use Wi-Fi. Um, so you know, it just depends, right? If you're using Wi-Fi, then turning off your computer is the best thing um, that you can do. So you don't even have to have it exposed, and that's the whole point. Um, you just don't want it to be exposed, right? So back to this. Um, so when we're looking at this, right? When we were looking at the daily view, we were looking at this area here as being the area where price could potentially flip and take us bullish, right? So let's go back to that, uh, back on the daily, right? And that's what this area is right here, 3,200, 3,400. So let's go back to the 144 chart. And we're going to look at this area here, right? 3,200, 3,400, right? Now, what do we see on the volume profile? What we see, and let me just put a little rectangle here just for posterity's sake. So it's clear what I'm talking about. Give me a second, guys, because I always have a hard time finding where this stuff is at. Jesus, I just want to draw some shit. All right, here we go. So this little area, right? This is a little area we're talking about. And as you guys can see, it's highlighted here on the axis, on the y-axis of the scale price scale and this is exactly what I wanted to show right we're seeing all of this distribution here right and this is what the yellow is versus the blue right and now I know it's faded versus this and the reason it's faded is because this area is considered the tail area of price action meaning where activity took place but not a high quantity of activity with respect to the rest of the chart. Now, the area that is highlighted is what's called the fair value area, right? And this is pretty much where you have your two standard deviations of price, right? Um, so that's what's going on here. But the important thing to highlight is that this distribution, right, affects, if hex, huh? If Ethereum does happen to travel back up to the 3,000 price area, it has to get above 3,000, period, which is a problem because it has nothing but a cell wall above it, meaning if it gets back up there, that's what it's going to run into. No buying action, just selling activity. So that's the whole thing, right? When, when price travels back into an area where that previous activity happened and there was nothing else there, that same activity is more than likely going to replicate in that area because it's important to remember that this is all about probabilities, right? There's nothing set in concrete stone here because we can be broken out one second and then price could immediately be rejected the next, right? And this has happened in hex numerous times. So you just keep that in mind. Um, yeah. So, now let's take a look at what price is doing versus the moving averages uh, just to get a closer look here for Ethereum specifically, right? And as we can see, the trend 
without the moving average is currently bullish, right? However, price action is strictly bearish, lower highs across the board, even if we have higher lows, right? Because right now we're in a downtrend. So the preponderance of the evidence is letting us know that the activity is skewed to the downside because that's what the chart is saying, right? Every time we get up, we get smacked back down, period, right? And that's all that we've been seeing. But right now we're poking, right? The, the turtle head is poking out, so to speak. So when we scale out, right, let's go to 377 minutes, right? We're looking at price potentially moving up right and even the macd seems to be bullish right scrolling up past the 90 or past the zero mark right uh the rsi is trying to recapture the middle band potentially right we've seen it try before and fail so this is why we have to be cognizant of what the actual trend is with each respective time frame and this is why i like these trend lines that i use this is why i respect them i didn't respect them for a while because i had to learn how they worked but once I learned how they worked, it really helped me keep things in check because that's what it's all about, especially when you're trading intra position and or intra time. Right. And you're not just. I don't know, uh, you know, pissing in the wind, so to speak. Right. Because um, <laughs> that's what most traders do until they realize that that's not what they need to do. Right. Like I remember when I first started trading, I was just clicking on everything. I was even trading freaking spreads and I had no idea I was doing that. I was just looking at products and seeing what they were and trading them. I didn't really know what I was trading. Right. And, and that's how a lot of us start out. Like I first started trading FX. I, my first trades weren't even stocks, you know, like it was FX because of my upbringing. It was more in line with being exposed to exchanging currency than buying stock. So, you know, everybody is going to learn different things at different points in time. Oh, thank you for the <laughs> super sticker, Randy. Uh, and just so everybody can see it, uh, it's a deal with it <laughs> with the shades uh, emoji. But it's like a video game uh, character. It's pretty cool. Thanks, Randy. I appreciate it, brother. <laughs> um, but yeah, so when we're looking at this, right? Now, let's pull up the volume profile again. We're seeing that we have nothing but overhead resistance currently above us. We have volume here, right? Like at this area, that's volume, right? So if price hits that, and there's a lot of sell volume there, as you can see, because there's a lot of orange there versus the blue, which is buying activity, right? So this is what you got to be aware of. But also at the same time, it's important to realize that there's been a lot of selling happening here. Right. And price hasn't really rolled over just yet. It's kind of been consolidating. So it's important to be aware of that as well, because consolidation usually precedes. Right. More of the same. Or. Or. Right. It becomes dull. To the point where you're like, well, what the hell is going on? And then all of a sudden just reverses. Right. Like that's pretty much what markets do. They don't really just go sideways. Right. They go sideways until they do something. And it's important to be aware of what it's doing, how it's doing it and why it's doing it, because you don't want to be the person that's buying when it's already at thirty five hundred. At least I know I don't because that's not how I roll. So I made sure to develop my abilities to be able to understand the scope of the market and when it's actually going to reverse. And when it's not, because I spent 10 years trying to buy the dip and sell the top. So what I ended up learning was that doing this while cool is stupid because this is a risky trade every time. Why? Because you get this, you get that, you get this, you get that, right? Sometimes it's not going to be clean like this. And this is what it took me years to learn that. Because it's easy to buy bottoms. It's easy to sell tops because you think you know what you're doing because you're reading some indicator. But the fact of the matter is, is that an indicator can only tell you but so much. The market is going to ultimately tell you what's really going on. And that only comes from price action, right? So what I ultimately ended up determining was is that you're better off letting the market bottom out 
which is what we're seeing here, right? You got negative divergence, positive divergence, whatever. But then the market bounces. It looks like it left you behind, but not really. It comes back and it traverses previous areas of support. Right. And it even almost comes back and touches that bullish engulfing pattern that we have here with these candles. Right. Because that's what we have here. You have a very nice down move in price here. And then it kind of got stumped and reversed. And this is what this bullish engulfing pattern typically means. A uh, nice fat red candle to the downside with a nice slinky wick right nice little half slinky wink here all right and then just a full reversal of that body right it's like it didn't even happen and boom right this is where i've learned to typically buy dips when moves are over but is it over that's what i'm not so sure about because the overall structure is negative right even if the overall trend is bullish, right? We have to be aware of this line. We have to be aware of this line. We have to be aware of the, these lines. And we have to be aware of the fact that we just had a tremendous run up, right? And what is this, 2021? So it's it just turned six months, right? And it's not to say that it can't run up more. It's to say that we need to be aware of it. Right. Because these things do what they're designed to do. Right. And whether it's by intention or not is irrelevant, but we can determine what they're designed to do by looking at the return streams and how they function. And with that, we already know how Ethereum is designed to function. Right. Because they're trying to alter that design as we speak. That's what EIP 1559 is all about. Right. It's about altering the design of Ethereum to where it's like Hex. Yeah, that's a fact, not an opinion. So it's important people realize that when it comes to Ethereum, right? Uh, it's trying to get to where Hex is already at, right? So it ran up 5X basically, or 4X really, um, <clears throat> in half a year, right? So to have a 50% retracement, 60% retracement, not crazy. Uh, the odds of it retracing 100%, uh, not zero, but not highly likely, right? Um, the odds of moving back down to 700, 800 this year, probably not in the cards. You have a lot of buying right down here. You see that blue? All of this blue here is greater than all of this yellow or orange, whatever you want to call it, right? So that's how you look at it. I mean, it's, it's again, this stuff is as simple as you want it to be or as complicated as you want it to be. Um, and I keep it simple because guess what? Price is going to do what price is going to do no matter what. Um, so as of now, uh, Ethereum is looking like it's going to continue consolidating within that 35 or i'm sorry 2200 to 2800 range which is a pretty wide range right that's 600 bucks but that's what happened when volatility is present right when markets are used to going in one direction volatility gets reduced to the point where complacency is a thing you understand so what that means is that you think you can just buy every day and it's always going to go up that's a function of volatility because what that means is that price is only going to go in one direction, even if it gyrates over time, right? Because clearly we have red bars here. It's not all green, <clears throat> but that's just menial volatility. That's just people taking profits. That's normal. That's nothing, right? So the question is, is this a normal move on a grander time scale? That's the question, right? That's what we don't actually know yet. That's what we we're going to wait to find out. And if we are going to stick to our guns and understand what crypto is and understand that this is a long-term thing, right? Because we already see what it's done two times, right? Now, let me get rid of this here. All right now, we're talking about Ethereum right now. We're not even talking about Bitcoin. We're just talking about Ethereum, right? It's already ran up 
24,000% once from 16 to 18, right? And we ran up, what is this? This is the bottom, right? Yeah, 90. This is the bottom for uh, <laughs> the 2020 dip in March. And um, we went all the way to, what is this, 43.73 in May before we actually topped out and, and reversed, right? And that's approximately 4,800%, <clears throat> right, from peak to trough. So we won 2,400 and then only, or 24,000 and then only 4,800 basically. So the question is, are we going to really going to retrace, you know, whatever the retracement was this time around, let's, let's compare it, right? Because we know we can reduce it by a factor of five and a half or so, right? And we reduced, we retraced, oof crazy um a hundred percent or 94 percent yeah 94 percent some people can't sit through that kind of volatility man you know and and that's the important thing to understand uh let's see here i killed epstein nice name uh appreciate your your hard efforts we have the vix for traditional markets is there a volatility indicator for crypto other than the historical volatility indicator trading tool do you ever use this tool, Grace Stream? Thank you. I killed Epstein. Uh, the only there is some type of volatility tool. Um, I don't really use it frequently. Uh, let's see here if I can find it real quick. Uh, let me see. It's like a fear engage index. It's not really even a volatility reading. Um, where is this damn thing? Can't find it. Uh, where is it? Shit, I know I had it. Let's see. Let's see, there has to be something out there for it, right? It's been around long enough. There you go. I actually do know this site. So here you go. Here's some volatility for those that are into that. Um, honestly, I think uh, I used to be big into options. Throw this thing in the chat for people that more that are interested. Um, thank you for the super chat. I killed that scene, and for all the super chats that I've that I've received so far, I honestly appreciate it. Um, so this is the link for volatility if you're interested for those that are um this is my thing with volatility um it's important to understand that volatility stacks so what does that mean um think about it like a slinky right and this is me and my physics brain now coming out um understand how a slinky works right once the slinky starts moving in one direction it pretty much goes in that direction, right? Like it's just gonna continue going that way. So if you move the slinky to the right, you're gonna, that slinky is gonna keep going in that direction. If it's going downstairs, it's gonna keep going down the stairs. If it's going up the stairs, then that's the direction of, of force. That's where it's gonna keep going, right? Volatility functions in the same way. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at there. Uh, volatility is defined as a variation in the rate of change of something. So if the rate of change is positive all of the time, right? And we're talking about what is the change in the change? That's what volatility really is. What is the change in the change? Uh, right? So that's important to understand. What is the change in the change? So when the change in the change is constant, there's no volatility, meaning it's always going up. Does that make sense? If you're if you're paying attention and, and what I'm saying makes sense, please let me know. 
because this stuff gets very convoluted and I don't want to lose anybody. Uh, but that's really just what it is. Um, volatility is just letting you know if the rate of change is constant or volatile. Like volatility here increased, right? And this is for Ethereum. Let's look at Bitcoin since we were looking at uh, chart of Bitcoin. Uh, so if we look at the time frame from December 18, 2017 through December 18, 2018, we should see increased volatility during this period of time, at least until halfway through, right? Until that volatility starts normalizing because the volatility is relative to all of this, right? So we have to remember that <laughs> this is almost, uh, everything is relative, right? All these measurements are relative. So when we go back to Bitcoin and we look at 2018, uh, let's just all right so what was it December 2018 was that what it was December 2017 hold on okay so that's August right so if we look at October 2017 volatility 30 day volatility for Bitcoin was at 3.23 percent and it doubled Right, it basically doubled, oh, almost three and a half x, two and a half x, right, from three percent to eight percent, right, in thirty days or in sixty days, right. Now that's huge. How is that huge? That's huge because it was strictly going in one direction for this whole time, to the point that the reading was almost flat, right, five and a half, two percent, five and a half, two percent. And then boom, whole new levels that people had never experienced before volatility, right? Let's see here. Yeah, sounds like standard deviation variances or sigma of X bar, correct. So, all right, so yeah. So let's look up the definition of volatility since it's going there. Um, and I like to look at the definition of things live because I want people to understand that I make them nothing. I'm just regurgitating what's, you know, already in existence. So it's a statistical measure of dispersion of returns for a given security or market index. Right. So it's just like I said, uh, it's just letting you know what the rate of change for the rate of change has been. Right. A statistical measure of the dispersion is just a fancy word for how things have changed. All right, let's look it up. Dispersion. What is dispersion? It's a statistical term that describes the size of the distribution of values expect, expected for a particular variable and can be measured by several different statistics. See? Uh, so this is what's important to matter or important to understand. Um, dispersion just means change. So potential changes. It's not, uh, it's just a fancy word because again, it's just the change in the change. Once the change in the change is the same, volatility can be low, right? That's all that means. So let, let me go back. Let's go back to 2016 just to get a bigger view of the, of the price action, right? Uh, as you can see, the volatility is low. We go to 2015, and it's the same thing again, right? One and a half percent. Top is four percent. Oh, five percent, right? So it stays in this band, this normal band of volatility, and then all of a sudden, comes summer of June, summer of July, 2017, August, it explodes at seven percent, right? And this is just 30-day volatility. I'm not looking at anything longer than that. Uh, but that explosion, right? While it might seem like nothing, you, this is the stacking that I'm talking about, right? It just keeps going in the same direction over and over and over and over and over. And then it creeps up, right? And then it starts doing a different level of stacking, right? But then guess what? Nothing lasts forever, including down price action, right? So come January, uh, December, 2018, it ends the down price action, right? The down price action. But let's look at what happens 
halfway through the year because this is 365 days. So let's go back and let's look at what happens right now. This is January 2018. All time highs and volatility for Bitcoin, right? That's basically what we're seeing here, right? I don't know if I can zoom this out. It doesn't look like it. I'm going to just keep it like that. So all time highs and volatility, 7.71%, January 1st, 2018, 30 day volatility, right? Look at what happens for the rest of the year. It just reverses automatically, right? So the volatility runs into a wall. And what ends up happening is that we're experiencing the flip, right? And this is what I ended up discovering about volatility and why I stopped watching it like a hawk, like most people do. Volatility is like a barometer. It's like a, it's like a beacon. It's like a light signal. Once that light turns on, that's all it's good for. Because besides that, it's just stacking. Meaning it's just letting you know the monotonicity of the returns are the same right? Meaning it's monotonic, meaning there's no variation. So when volatility is increasing, that's telling you that price is doing different things over time, right? And this is what we're seeing. This is just a complete opposite of what had happened previously. So volatility increased based on that. Okay. So that's all that's happening with volatility. And that's why I like to explain it like that. It's literally stacking or bell-shaped distribution and increase of volatility would be correct. That is correct, I code I've seen. So if the rate of change in a market where a bell-shaped distribution and increase in volatility would be on the outer edges of the distribution, and that is correct. Because anything within that bell-shaped curve that falls within the normal ranges of the distribution, i.e. the 68% slice, all of that is considered normal, meaning that this one and a half to two to five percent range for Bitcoin in this time frame was normal. Once we got out to this area, these were the outer edges of the distribution. Right. This is exactly what you just said. And then what happened was that the distribution then changed from the lows, uh, new lows of three, three and a half percent right over time for 2017 to the highs of seven, eight percent, seven percent, seven, one percent. Right. So it got up there. But the edges and the normalization of the distribution changed. It went from one and a half to four point five, five to three, three and a half to seven point seven. Right. So it essentially doubled and the range compressed. Right. So it's a volatility shock and awe. Right. And that's really what it was to the point that once February 2018 came around. Which was just here. Right. Volatility was done. It could do no more. Right. And, and what we ended up seeing was price just going in one direction. So when price is going in one direction. And it stays constant over time, right? This is a 30 day measure now, what we're looking at. Volatility is going to perpetually decrease in that motion, in line with that motion, right? So if it's up the price, if it's going up, this is what you're going to see, right? Volatility being low because price is doing the same thing over and over. And this is all you're seeing here, except that. To get to this point, right, it was more violent because it went all of this snap, right? And then price just was like a, a piece of paper just floating in the air. That's what volatility is showing you. That's why that, that, that bear market seemed like forever to most people, but it was only one year because that volatility just was killing them. It's a whole year of the volatility is just getting cut and what? Wow, and sixes. It went from 7.7 .7 to 1.5, right? So let's divide that. Because this is about amplification and motion, right? So these little numbers matter. So it got cut in half five times, right? Over time. 
So this is literally going nowhere for that whole period of time. Just that one downward motion. And imagine all the people that were buying at uh, 5538 bucks, right? At that level, 5540, that 5540 level. It stayed there for what is this? January 2718 until they broke it November 2018. So almost 10 months. Right? 10 months of sideways action. Yeah, if you're entering straddles, you'd rather be selling those. <laughs> Cause this is why understanding volatility is important. Right? If you're trying to play that uh volatility game, like options game, you need to understand volatility because volatility does not care about your entry price. Volatility will eat your premium alive. And I don't want to get into options because that wasn't the point of this uh, <clears throat> stream, but it ended up going there. So sorry about that, guys. But uh, it's topical, right? Because people need to understand how things go up and down, right? So right now, volatility is should be going down because it was up, right? So right now, if we go six months, yeah, see, right now, all right, let's go for one year. Okay, so it's gonna give me fine. Let me do two years. Just because this chart is not very detailed. Okay, good enough. So this is the dip, right? The Rona dip. Um, of course, this should make sense to you guys after I explain what volatility is. Price went from going up to an immediate reverse down. Um, so yeah, but now, uh, volatility is wearing its ugly head again, right? Because price has been going down versus the constant up, up, up that we saw, right? For the past, however long, 18 months, right? Since March, 2021 or 2020 to April. So a whole year, right? And that's when volatility flipped, right? When the top came, right? And this is how volatility works, right? So this is why it's important to understand how things move, right? That's really what that was all about. Because right now, it's seeming like Bitcoin is going to reverse. It seems that way. But we have to understand volatility in order to really determine whether that's going to be really true or not, right? Because volatility is going to be always the key to price action. That's why it's important. But you're going to kind of have to understand that it moves a certain way. And it's really just a function of price. Right? So understanding what volatility is telling you is just really understanding what price is telling you. Um, it's not something that stands alone. Very important people understand that when it comes to volatility. Um, so yeah, I do think this is a dead cat bounce. Yep. If, if, if this does continue to go higher, right? Because Bitcoin is no different than Ethereum from that perspective. There's a lot of supply up here, right? Um, look at price, right? Anytime you see a kink here, that's 41,000, 42,000 area. Whenever there's a kink there, right? There's going to be supply there. There's going to be resistance there. There's going to be support there. It works both ways, right? So it's important to understand that this is going to be resistance. Uh, this is going to be resistance. This is going to be resistance. This is going to be support, right? And that's what it's been, right? That's why price hit that right there. Um, so yeah, so those are my thoughts on Ethereum and, and, and Bitcoin. Uh, I think they're in dead cap bounce mode. Um, but it's important to be aware that they could reverse, but understand that volatility is kind of letting you know that that's probably not going to happen because when it starts stacking in one direction, right? Let's go back to it and let's look at Ethereum too, just for funsies. 
Uh, all right. What did they stop tracking it? Well, that's great. Um, all right. Well, let's just look at Bitcoin then. All right. So when volatility spikes, right? Uh, that typically means price is going to stop doing what it was doing and it's going to go the other way. Um, now let's look at a sample set of that. Let's just look at the past uh, one year. So July 27, 2020, all right? 26, 27, 2020. Uh, let's go to Bitcoin chart. How about that? It reversed five days prior. Not a coincidence, right? Um, and these are the kind of things that, you know, nobody's going to tell you this shit in the book. I mean, maybe I'll write one, but nobody's going to tell you this shit in the book, right? Like, these are the little nuances that you're not going to learn in a class or you can't pay for. Like, this is years and years of staring at charts. So, this is real shit, right? This is the shit that pays the bills. Um, September 15, 2020. Look at what happened two weeks prior. And look at what happened a week prior. Right? And if you go back to that volatility chart, there was a lot of shock and awe during that time, right? April 24th, April 28th, September 1st, September 6th, right? And then again, October 2nd into the 3rd. And again, it's about understanding that this is about the changes in the variation, right? The changes in the change. This is why it's confusing for so many people. It's about the change in the change. If the change isn't changing, then the volatility is going to be flat. It's going to be low. If the change is changing, then the volatility is going to be high, right? And that's why we see volatility start to spike here, and then it goes flat because it becomes monotonic, meaning it starts doing one thing, right? And that's October 7th. We'll go back, and I'm pretty sure that was a date. Yeah, see? It, it spiked, and then it rolled over, right? And then into the end of October, we should get some type of spike there in terms of price action going upward. Yeah, see? October 20th, 22nd. So we had a spike in price action going upward. And these are just how those things work, because there's upward volatility and downward volatility. It, it's not about which way it's going it's about the change in the change so i hope that clears up volatility for everybody uh maybe i'll do a stream just on that i didn't <laughs> tend to turn it into this um but yeah this is real life right uh nothing in the book and thank you for finesse for the comment nothing in the book has ever helped me decide what exactly to do finding the light amid real world nuance takes experience there really is no substitute that is a fact not an opinion for sure um so all right so that's bitcoin and ethereum for now they are definitely in dead cap bounce mode it seems um and i'll only say that because they broke out of the structure that they were following on their downtrend um And both of them have done that. So that's the only reason I'll say that. Um, but, you know, be aware I'm still of the mind frame that this could turn in at any time. Um, because the sentiment check, it was just crazy, man. Like, I'm sorry. I just don't think this is over. Like, you don't, you don't have all these institutions jump in the pool reverse the price and then just have it happen for a couple of days, right? Like this isn't like the 2020 dip at all. This is entirely different. You had so much hoopla going into this that literally lasted this whole year, right? From the end of 2020 into all of this year, like there was nothing but, you know, oh, Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that, Bitcoin's the best. Like, all right, cool. Um... So we talked about hex. This baby's on the up and up. Eight and a half cents. Nice and strong. Uh, let's get into the goody. Goody, goody, goodies of the events. I really got some good stuff for you guys. Um, and just so you guys know, 
This is about inflation and taxes in the economic sense. Okay, now that everybody's here um, and everybody's been here for a while, um, I am not here to give tax advice. Uh, as I've told you guys numerous times before, you need to learn how to read the tax code. This is crypto. This is decentralized. Nobody is here to take your money um, unless you're willing to give it to them. And I'm not here to give you tax advice. So don't give me money for that because I'm not giving it um, because everybody's jurisdiction is different. And I have actually read the tax code. So give me a second, guys. Excuse me, I had to sneeze there. Um, and when it comes to crypto, I highly recommend every read, everybody read as well. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, so, yeah. Oops, sorry about that, guys. So, yeah, disclaimer, uh, the information displayed in this broadcast is known to cause increased amounts of FOMO. Wells only is by himself, has no guests, and he is not responsible for your piss-poor staking when all I do is talk about five, 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 five stakes. See, that's your own fault because you should know better. Now let's get into it. What is inflation? The real one. Um, give me a second, guys. Um, so what is inflation? Inflation is when an increase in price levels is due to each unit of currency being able to buy fewer goods. Example, and in this example, I have a picture of a $20 bill and the goods it can buy in 1972, 1992, and 2012. Um, in 2021, you might have one item less. I think there's three items in that cart in 2012. And in 2021, it's probably one item less, uh, you know, this is the hidden tax, right? And as you guys know, my streams are an amalgamation of a true understanding of the financial and economic system. I'm not here to provide, you know, you know, advice on anything other than what's real, right? Like, I'm not here to tell you about this scam system called taxes. Like, I don't, I'm not the person that's going to help you with that. Sorry. Um, I'm here to enlighten you as to the fact that you're being robbed, right? By your own choosing because you don't understand what's going on, right? And, you know, it's important that we educate ourselves so that we make the right financial decisions so that we do keep the majority of our hard earned income because guess what? Most of us are relegated to working hours for, for dollars, right? We don't get to just, you know, sell our time uh, and give it later, right? Like we got to work for it now, right? Like this is why we have jobs and stuff. So if you're not an entrepreneur, <clears throat> you're not swapping out value for, for money. You're swapping out hours for money, right? So it's a little different. It's a little different. Um, yeah, smash those likes, guys. I don't know what it's looking like right now, but uh, oh, wow. Nice. Uh, no complaints here. <laughs> um yeah, that's right. <laughs> sure did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just noticed that. <laughs> I'm like a Democrat, right? <laughs> a Democrat in Chicago. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, thanks to uh, all the people. All right, hold on, guys. Jeez. Sorry about that, guys. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, you know, this is this is really what inflation is, right? When you hear about it in the news and on TV. <laughs> yeah, right? 
was funny. <laughs> Jay Powell calling, yeah. Maybe, maybe him and uh, Janet Yellen both were online talking about, boy, if you don't get up off that live stream, you're going to send them dudes in to get you. <laughs> so, yeah, this is why I don't show my face to whoever was asking earlier. Only a fool would do that when they're talking about money. Uh, money in, in our lifetime is not money. All right? Money in our lifetime is fake. It's monopoly money. What you think you get paid with is trash. It's not, it's not money. If it was money... It would be like hex. It would gain value over time. It wouldn't lose value over time, and that's a fact. And uh, if you don't know that, then you should go back to my early streams. Um, I go over all of this stuff in my early streams. Um, and yeah, this is really valuable information. Please, please, you know, go back and watch them. Um, they're free. You know, only on the only one that I put an ad on for now, just to see how it works, is the uh, how does crypto work. Because nobody knows really how cryptos work and everybody should know. Um, so if you don't know, definitely watch that. Because um, <clears throat> that one is really the precursor to everything else. If you don't know how cryptos work, then you're going to get left behind. Um, and that's just a fact. You know, you don't want to get left behind because dollars, fiat currencies, right? Each unit of currency that we're talking about here is a fiat currency. It's not a dollar. It's not anything. It's not a silver backed anything. It's not backed by anything. Hell, I'm, hold on, guys. Sorry, guys. You know, I live in the middle of a freaking world. Uh, uh, thank you, Black One. I appreciate the comment, brother. Uh, appreciate the comment, man. I'll, I'll leave it up to the people to read it. Appreciate it, man. Uh, appreciate it. So, yeah. So, this is the real inflation, right? Um, <clears throat> nah, not me. <laughs> so, this is the real inflation, right? No matter what they call it, at the end of the day, and I'm going to show you guys that at the end of the day, the fact is, is that there is not enough currency to go around, right? No matter if it's supply shock, demand shock, whatever, there's just not enough currency to go around. Now, what are the other types of inflation? Because we hear about them all the time. We hear about them more than any other one. Um, and inflation is really just a hidden tax, right? Um, anytime something costs more, it requires you more to get it. It's not like you're getting paid more, right? Uh, and if you've had a job, like a, a salary job or anything like that, where you get paid every year and you're promised a increase in salary in line with inflation or the cost of living, blah, 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 whatever they call it. Give me a second, guys. Right, all of that fun stuff, you'll see that that level of increase is rarely in line with what is actually happening in the streets, right? And that is not a mistake, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, that's by design, believe it or not. Um, you know, you have what's really going on, which you don't see, and I didn't even put it in here, which is crazy. I should have done that. Uh, I forgot. It's stagflation. Now, what is stagflation? We'll look it up um, so you guys can see it live. But first, we'll go through this, uh, through all this information. <laughs> I'm Mario Lopez. <laughs> hey, oh, you funny, bro. <laughs> I do not look like I'm five. That dude never gets old. Yo, he's crazy. He he still look like he is saved by the bell. What the fuck? That dude never gets old. He definitely got to be on that good stuff. Um, so you got demand pull inflation, right? Which is the so-called rising demand in the economy, which is the inflation that was supposedly experienced in America after the boomers grew up, right? Because <clears throat> they were the biggest generation until the millennials or the Gen Z or whatever they're called. And that was when the U.S. supposedly first experienced it's rising demand in economy inflation. 
Okay. That's one. Core inflation. Inflation rate ex excluding temporary factors. That's interesting because as far as I've noticed, there isn't a single inflationary temporary factor that I've seen in my life. Not one. So, yeah. Hyperinflation. Inflation over a thousand percent a year. Uh, let's hope we don't get there. Imported inflation. Inflation caused by a rising price of imports or due to a currency devaluation. Now, a lot of countries outside of the U.S. experience that. Argentina, Venezuela, Colombia has experienced this. A lot of Latin American countries have experienced this. A lot of Eastern European bloc countries have experienced this. Russia has experienced this. Um, Germany has experienced this, right? We, we've all seen and heard the stories and yes, they're true. Um, you know, devaluation, hyperinflation, one, the same, uh, cost push inflation, right? Like they give these things, all these different names to make it sound different. But at the end of the day, there's one net result, wage inflation and Inqu inflation caused by rising real rate, real wage. Now, I can't remember the last time I saw that one. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. No thanks. Um, and here's the source where I got this information, as always. Um, this one was just from the brain. Uh, so, yeah. So, the next slide is just talking about the net. What is the net of all the different inflation types? All types of inflation occur due to the currency being in oversupply, current situation, or in demand, or... And demand for goods and services reach a point that the consumer does not have enough currency units to obtain a good or service. So what's the end result there? Right. The end result is the currency problem. Period. Bar none. Right. You need more of that currency, which you do not have because it is fiat. Right. It doesn't gain in value. It decreases in value. Because if it gained in value, you would need more of it to obtain the same item. See, this is what's lost on people. We're talking about bread, eggs, milk, butter here. iPads and cars. Well, hell, even cars. Cars should cost less. It should not cost more. It shouldn't. The technological advances are ridiculous. But yet they cost 10, 20, 30 times more. Why is that? Nobody asked that question. And that's the... That's the number one question to ask, right? And this is why I'm doing this stream, because that's the only question that matters. That's why crypto is the last hope. Without crypto, right, the, 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 the hopes of the U.S. or most Western countries uh, shoring up their finances. And now by I mean, by they, I mean the citizenry, right? Not the governments. They don't matter. The citizenry. Right. Because if you live in a Western economy or most economies, for that matter, at this point in time, uh, odds are you have a hard time making ends meet. Right. The average person has a hard time getting by. Right. That's just an economic fact. Right. Not an opinion. Just walk outside and see it. Um, you know what I'm saying? So it's just out there like this isn't this isn't stuff that's hidden. If you want to see it, you can go find it. You just got to go outside. This is not my opinion. Um, this is just what's going on. In fact, I was talking about this earlier in the Hex Asian stream. I like to walk around New York City. This is how I do my... Hold on, guys. It's a party, yes. All right, I think uh, you guys are out of the music by now. All right, so I walk around the city just to see. Uh, well, one, because I've always done that. Two, because it's what I like to do. Three, uh, just to see. That's how I do my quote-unquote channel checks. And what a channel check is, when you're doing floor-level research, right, in person, uh, conducting economic or financial assessment, right? That's just called a channel check. Um, you're just doing on the floor analysis and that's the way I've always done it um, before I even knew I was doing it because the fact of the matter is that all the information you need to make a financial decision is in your face. This is why 
buying stocks for the past 10 years didn't make sense to me. Because when you walk around outside, you see not the reason to be buying stocks. You see the reason to be getting the hell out of Dodge, right? Because when you walk around, all you see is homeless people and businesses closing and real estate never opening up and retail space just going blank, right? Like nobody filling it. Uh, it's just a different scene out there, right? And even more so now, after everything that's happened over the past 18 months, it's even crazier out there, right? A lot more homeless people, a lot more people without a job, a lot more people that are just in the way, a lot more businesses that are not opening up, a lot of empty retail space, right? A lot of businesses that are just gone, never coming back. And this is the reality of 2021, right? It's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's phenomenal because people act like it's not going on and yeah, it's going on, right? Like, you know, and, they, and they're still trying to not reopen the whole country. Like it's crazy. Um, <clears throat> because this is everybody's livelihood, right? And this is what inflation is doing. And right now, huh, oh, inflation is a thing, right? Like, this is a graphic, nothing crazy. And damn, you know what? I don't even have the link in here. I should get the link. I'll put the link in the chat. Give me a second. Um, it's just a graphic showing just the changes in prices. And it looks like it's in India. Uh, no, it's all over the world. Just the different prices um, across the world for the same item, right? Uh, and this looks like it was a few years ago by the items and the prices that are on the graphic. And I mean, just take a look, right? Same time frame, different prices, right? And when you do the conversion, they're going to be different prices. You can do the conversion to one currency for a few of these, and they're going to be different prices. Why? Because of tariffs, import taxes, right? That's what that is, or export taxes or tariffs. Uh, you got different kinds of taxes, right? Um, and we're going to get to that. And, but you have to understand that inflation and taxes are really one and the same because it's just like identity block said at the beginning, it's all a hidden tax, right? Like even taxes, right? Like if you go back to 200 years ago, that being 1812 or whatever, 1821, there weren't any income taxes. Shit was, a, that, that was like, no, people went to war for that. Like, no. And people forgot just because of a war in 1861. And we'll get to it. Uh, you know, a fake war at that. And I'm not even going to debate that. You need to do your research and find out what the Civil War was about. It wasn't about ending slavery. That's a farce. Do your research. I'm not going to go into history class on that one. But uh, that wasn't about ending slavery. You need to read the 13th Amendment and understand what's not being said and what is being said. OK, that wasn't about slavery. That's that's what they want you to believe. That wasn't about that. Um, so with that. You know, educate yourself, understand what was happening, right? The, everything that's happened over time has been a control grab. That's why understanding the flow of money, how money works, inflation, taxes, economics, all of these nuances are important. Right. Exactly. That's a freaking fact. That's a fact, right? A lot of people forget that. Uh, the tea, what is it, the Boston Tea Party was over taxes on tea, period. It wasn't over anything else. Taxes on tea, right? And, and again, all this stuff is documented. It's not the crap you're reading in your history books. It's not the crap they put in Time Magazine. It's not none of that shit, right? That's all mainstream media crap. It's not the reality, right? The reality is, is contra that the reality isn't paying taxes is good for you. The reality is not 2% inflation is good. It's not any of that. That's all lies period. Oh yeah. Most people are not. It's okay. <clears throat> uh, so we'll keep it moving. So what is deflation? Deflation is really the opposite of inflation, right? Uh, deflation is considered negative by the powers that be for obvious reasons. 
They want to keep stealing from you. But inflation in reality is a good thing. Deflation is a decrease in the price level of price level of goods and services over a period of time. Considered negative by the academic community as it increases the purchasing power of the fiat unit. That's why it's bad. Important to understand that. Mull on that for a second, right? How can the increase and the purchasing power of something that you hold be a negative? But yet, that's what the people in power say. This is real. Look it up. Matter of fact, I think I have a web page open just for that shit because it's unbelievable. Let's see. Here we go. Show the fuck do. Because <clears throat> I ain't crazy. Deflation is worse than inflation because interest rates can only be lowered to zero. This is what they say. Literally. Like, that's real. Right? But the simple fact of the matter is deflation is, and this is, uh, the website here is thebalance.com. Just so everybody can see that. Um, deflation is when the prices of goods and services fall. Deflation expectations make consumers wait for future low prices. That reduces demand and slows growth, right? Which is inflation for them, right? This is what they're trying to say here, right? It sometimes is not what is said is what's not said, right? And then they follow up with deflation is worse than inflation because interest rates can only be lowered to zero. Now, how crazy is that? Clearly, that's not true because they're at negative full fledged in Europe. So they won't do that here because the implication of that is globally shattering. So they can't do that here. Uh, what's going on, Nardo, brother? Thank you for coming through. Dodeca, thanks for coming through, man. Um, <clears throat> yep, that's what they're trying to do. Uh, they've, they've tried to send me letters threatening me to uh, let them in to put a smart meter in my apartment. Fuck off. You bitches are going to have to break my door down. You're not getting smart shit up in here. So they can kiss my ass on that one. Um, but yeah, they're trying to do that. They're trying to do that. For sure, for sure. Um, here's another graphic I want to show. Because it's important. Um, actually, no, we'll come back to that one. Um, let's see where we're at. Oh, yeah. A5227. Let's keep going, folks. But this is why I want to talk about deflation, right? So deflation is something that's actually good but yet it's presented as bad, right? Um, and we already know <laughs> deflation is costing every tale. Now, think about it. If you have $100, $100,000, $100 million, and the prices of goods and services are going down, okay? How is that a bad thing exactly? I would love to know because I honestly do not get it at all and i'm not you know us i don't like to think i'm slow but uh yeah i'm not slow like that when it comes to that no nah, i'm not slow so how is prices going down and you being able to buy more shit a bad thing <clears throat> please tell me i would love to know but that's what we're being told right and, and i included this graphic here because it's important because this is the narrative, right? Now, what is the opposite of inflation? Deflation, disinflation, compression, decrease, reduction, shrinkage, abridgment, demurness, right? So it's all words with a negative connotation. But in reality, it's a positive thing. Inflation is what? Oh, it's good for growth. It's this and that. It's always presented in a positive light. But the reality is, is that it's a negative thing. You understand? So these are the games that they play with people's minds. And this is why you have to spread the word and, and educate yourself and, and be aware of what's going on because it's very easy to get duped into thinking that what's happening makes sense when it clearly does not. Right? So what are taxes? <clears throat> We're going to get into that because now you understand that inflation is just a hidden tax. Right? The prices of goods going up is a bad thing. Because what it means is that the value of the currency that you're holding is going down. That's literally all that means. It doesn't mean anything else. No matter what the reason is, the end result is you do not have enough currency to pay for that good or service. Plain and simple. Right? 
Plain and simple. So what are taxes? Taxes are a sum of money demanded by government for specific facilities or services. Taxes are generally levied upon the following depending where you live. Income, payroll, property, transactions, things, sales, tax, right, in the U.S. or VAT in the EU. Tariffs, taxes on important exported goods and estate taxes apply to the fair value of a person's property upon death, as well as corporate taxes, right? Those are pretty much the all the run of the mill taxes that we used to seeing. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go to my usual, we're going to go through all those, and how an economy works chart, right? The public sector, sorry guys, the public sector is there to serve a function, right? And it was just defined, right? Now, sit there and think about the difference between the two entities on this chart. If you're watching this stream, you're part of the 70% over here. If you, if you do not work for the federal government or any government, period, you're part of the 70%. If you do work for the government, you're part of the 30%. Now, here's the thing. What is the government there to do? Think about that question. The government is there to facilitate or provide a service, right? Pretty simple. So why exactly do they need a third of your income? Why? That's something to think about. And I want you guys to take 10 seconds to think about that. Simple fact of the matter is you're not receiving that third in value. In fact, you might be receiving 1% of that 30%. Maybe if you're lucky, right? Like those are the facts. Right. So keeping that in mind is very important, right? That's exactly the whole point of all of my streams. So people understand that. You're getting jipped, man. You're not getting a good deal no matter where you live. You're paying more than you're receiving hands down because you're getting taxed constantly, not just in your face, but also through inflation, right? So this is a great question because that's the whole point, right? Since the Fed can print, well, hold on, let's, let's rephrase. Since central banks can print whatever they want, why do they collect tax? And it's this simple. Seriously. And all these charts I'm about to go through are going to show you just that. Right? And this is what the stream is about. So people can understand exactly what's happening with the money. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Why else do we have to work? Why else do we have to pay bills? Right? Why else do we have to do the things that we do? Why else are we in crypto? Why else are we watching the stream? Why else am I here talking to you guys? Right? It's all one in the same. It's all leaning to the same place. And that is what the hell is going on. That's the only reason I know what I know is because I've been trying to figure it out my damn self. And and I'm no different than all of you guys. I'm not. I just been searching longer. That's all. So I have some answers, but here are some things to think about. Now, payroll taxes and income taxes are what? Two taxes that happen at the same instance, right? Right. And, and yes, Bifinex, this is very, this is very factual. Uh, since the government is not a choice, there isn't an incentive for them to make a profit or provide value. Now, that's that's the notion that exists today, right? I think it's pretty apparent that government is a choice. There are plenty of places out there that I've heard of that don't rely on a government at all. I know of a place in Mexico, to, to be a fact, that the government had to run away. They just don't interact with the citizens at all like they literally ran them the hell out of there something to consider so government is a choice education however should not be but people seem to think that that is that's exactly why people think government is not a choice in fact it is 
If you read the Constitution, it says it clearly right there. It is entirely legal for every single person that is in office right now from the top on down to be removed, removed expeditiously if citizens deem so. But if the citizens don't know so, then it doesn't matter. And that's the problem that we have today. People just do not know because they're too busy watching their reality TV and keeping their nose in bullshit. Just what it is, right? Um, it's just what it is. Hey, what's going on, David? Thank you for coming through, brother. Uh, and, you know, you guys just smash those likes and make sure you uh, subscribe. And that way you don't miss any streams because it's crazy out here. Wanksy on potholes. Not sure who that is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's another example, right? Just look at the infrastructure nationwide. I mean, hell, fuck nationwide. If you live in any Western country uh, outside of Europe, I'm pretty sure your infrastructure is trash. It's like run of the mill standard. You know, that's just what it is. Um, <clears throat> you know, yeah, and this is just another example. Um, you know, it's just, it's common. I mean, roads in my country, which is a so-called third world country are better than the roads here in America, the first world, right? And like, clearly not everywhere, but it shouldn't be the case anywhere. That's the thing, right? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Um, well, here's an interesting thing, right? There's property taxes for sure. I got that listed. Um, you never actually owned any land in America. You really only have a 99 year lease and that lease is what gets passed on. You don't ever actually own anything outright because you have to pay property taxes on it. Right? So that's, uh, that's the thing. And I'm not trying to get political. I'm, I'm getting factual. Right. Um, but it is true. Uh, unfortunately I'm not getting political. I'm just getting factual. So I just want people to understand that. These are the facts, right? These are all taxes that we pay. Income tax, payroll tax. Your income is taxed. The business that employs you is taxed for employing you. That's what payroll taxes are. Property taxes are the taxes on the land upon which you live. Now, is the government paying taxes on the land that they're occupying? I don't think they are. Does anybody out here think they are? I don't, I don't think they are. Um... So why the hell do we got to pay taxes for the land that we're occupying? Good question. Uh, if anybody finds an answer, let me know. So, you know, it's all of these different things that don't make any sense that currently happen. And nobody questions it. You know, uh, it's time people to start educating themselves, taking control of their life back, figuring out, well, how the hell do I get out of this hole? And it's by educating yourself. Um, that's the only way out. Uh, that's how I find myself streaming with a bunch of people watching. It's not by mistake. It's by effort, design, sweat, right? So where do the taxes go? Because this is what the question is all about. At the end of the day, why are we getting taxed? Where's all this money going? And to be honest with you, this should really be a two-part stream because <clears throat> there's so much information within these charts I'm about to show you. And there's so much information tied to this specific question right here. Um, yes, uh, for sure. For sure. To pay for the ongoing cost of military assets is a fact. Um, they're talking about it, but that's going to take a whole lot. It's not going to be that simple. That's going to be, this is going to be wars of fight for that one because you got to understand every billionaire doesn't side with Bill Gates, period. It's just that simple. Every billionaire doesn't side with Warren Buffett, you know? So, yeah, these are called excise taxes, right? Lots of taxes in the bills you pay, phone, um, cable, electric. Those are excise taxes that let you think you have a choice, but you don't. Right. <clears throat> That's included in transactional taxes because of the taxes just for consumption. Um, and that's basically what excise taxes are. And those are technically the only legal taxes that are supposed to exist in America. 
America is supposed to be a place where you don't have taxation without representation, and that is now the norm nowadays. That is a standard, not, you know, don't get it confused. That's a standard. So where do all the taxes go, right? So what we're looking at right now is federal net outlays, which is the right axis, versus gross domestic product, which is the left axis. Now, <clears throat> as you guys know, GDP is literally the value of goods produced in dollar terms. It's not the number of units sold or anything like that. It's just whatever's made, so it doesn't even have to get sold, right? Very important to understand that. Now, we're looking at approximately 24 trillion in GDP here, right? And federal net outlays of seven trillion. So what that's telling me is if you look at it as a ratio, <clears throat> they're taking seven out of twenty-four, which is almost twenty-five percent of federal net outlays is going is a function of GDP. Right? So federal net out outlays are twenty-five percent of GDP, basically, twenty, twenty-five percent of GDP. So what is a federal net outlay? That's everything the government spends, period, right? So that number is clearly deflated because they spend way more than $7 trillion. Let's keep looking. So here we have current expenditures, right? Now, I'm pretty sure everybody's heard of transfer payments. And if not, let me explain. Transfer payment is a good, is a payment that the government has to do. No option, right? No option, no option, no option. They have to do it. Uh, like paying Social Security payment, right? Until that fund goes bust to the point where they have to admit it's bust, even though we all know. They're going to keep faking the funk, taxing us, and making payments from that pool of money, right? And that's how that works. Um, so hold on. I thought VAT was an addition to tax, to sales tax. From what I remember, VAT was just the sales tax. It was just a flat tax that incorporated every tax that, you know, people, the bureaucrats in Europe wanted incorporated. I'm not sure that it's supposed to be... Uh, in addition to, for as far as I know, it's just one flat tax. Yeah, you know, I used to agree with that until we got to 2021. I mean, you know, I've kind of, I've always been on the fence with this notion, and I'll explain why. Um, you're welcome, Max Farmer. You're welcome, brother. Thank you for watching. Um, and I'll explain why I don't really agree with this. I've always had, I've always been on the fence with this one. I agree and I don't agree. I agree because, of course, nobody likes being treated like shit, right? And this is what we pretty much all experience in Western civilization. Um, <clears throat> but what we have to be cognizant of is the fact that, um, you know, if we keep running, that we're going to eventually be left with nowhere to run. And that's what 2020 really impressed upon me. Now, what do I mean? Think about it like this. I'm a first-generation American. Most of the people I interact with are first-generation Americans, whether they're Polish, Pakistani, Chinese, Indian, whatever, right? So how the fuck do so many people from all over the world end up here, right? Um, well, they ran from where they were from, you know, parents of Poland, parents of the American Republic, parents of Puerto Rico, parents of Cuba, parents just fucking left. They left all over the fucking, you know, all over the globe. So what are we left with when that, when something like that happens? Well, what we're left with is 2020. The whole world is under assault by a bunch of random motherfuckers. Nobody even knows how the fuck it happened, but it fucking happened. And we're left twiddling our thumbs waiting to be allowed. Well, not, not all of us, but some of us 
are left twiddling our thumbs waiting to be allowed to go back outside. I mean, I find that fucking shit hilarious because I've I've never been outside more in my life until 2020. But for most people, that hasn't been the case because they're playing the game, not realizing it's a game. Right. So all of that is to say you keep running, you're going to be left with nowhere to run. So I don't agree with that anymore. Um, I'm of the mind that people need to learn that they need to educate themselves, not let a random person just tell them what the fuck to do, because guess what? That's the fucking problem. Period. Right. That's the problem. You keep running. You're left with nowhere to run. And that's what 2020 taught me. Like it, it literally like cemented that in my brain. Running is no longer an option. No, it's not. Uh, I don't agree with that. Uh, and I used to. Because the fact of the matter is, is, if you give them what they want, you lose. So while I understand the sentiment, I would advise against it. I advise that people educate themselves, find a purpose, and stick it where it needs to go. Because nobody tells you what to do. Only you do. That's what crypto is all about. So it's important people remember that this is about self-responsibility, self-governance, sovereignty, Right. Not some random individual thinking that they know what's better for you than you. That's clearly not a solution. And 2020 and 2021 are going to be cemented in history as the definition of that. Take care of yourself because nobody else can do it for you. So, you know, it's it's crazy. Once greater than 50 percent of the population gets free money, it's tyranny of of the majority. Guess free money is tyranny of the majority, and it has happened. Yeah, you know, I think we're actually close to that because I know for a fact 50% of the adult population is not working. There's no way. There's not enough jobs. And then you got all these handouts being given. People that just aren't just not working. You know what I mean? Like, there's just no way. And 80% of the population lives in a city, right? So, you know, it's all fucked up because that's where cities were hit the most, right? Um. Thanks for the super chat, Hex Monkey. This is a great question. Uh, so what should we do other than buy crypto? That is, how do we protect ourselves and our property since we can't run? It's not that you can't run. My thought process is that we need to stop running. Uh, running is the problem. Running is why you got states like New York, right? States like California. That's the problem. States like, like Illinois, places like Chicago. You got to stop running. You got to put your fucking foot in people's asses and tell them, no, you're fucking wrong. That's not how we're going to do shit. That's not how we were doing shit. And that's not how we want to do shit. You can't see like the Bronx is a perfect example, right? If you look at the history of the Bronx, the history of the Bronx is one such that everybody lives in harmony here. There was no racism until it was created in the 60s, period. White people live with black people. Black people live with Spanish people. Spanish people live with white people. That's how the Bronx was. Believe it or fucking not. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually as close to utopia as you can get in America because everybody lived in harmony. That's what the Bronx was. The Bronx is where people want to escape everywhere else. Believe it or not. Yeah. And then it became a fucking hellhole that it currently still kind of is. Go figure. So it's not that we can't run. It's that we shouldn't run. Because what ends up happening is that you let these fucking bad actors just take over. And what we end up with is 2020, 2021, because I'm going to say this again until I die. I know for a fact nobody on this planet voted for 2020. Nobody. I know it. Whoever says yes is lying and deserves to get slapped the fuck up because there's no way in hell. No way in hell. Right. Like, let's be honest. How did that? how, How does 2020 make any sense to anybody? It doesn't. Right. Like, nah, nobody, nobody voted for that. I'm sorry. Like, if, if you're going to say and tell me you voted for that, please make sure you come with a shaven face. So I can slap the skin off that shit because you're lying. <laughs> you're lying like crazy. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Um, well, you know, interestingly enough, uh, the leadership in California is teetering, just like the leadership in in. New York is teetering. Leadership and everywhere is teetering. And I don't know if you guys are aware of what happened today with Mr. B-I-D-E-N, but I suggest you take a look. Uh, things everywhere are teetering. 
Um, so yeah. And yes, Jonathan, thank you for your comment, Jonathan Kampala. Most humans don't know they own themselves and have free will of choice. It's very true. Uh, I do live under natural law. Personally, I don't give a fuck about anybody else's shit. I know that I'm always trying to do the right thing. And that's all I care about. You know, somebody else's prerogative is not my own. And that's your own fucking problem. You know what I mean? So it's very important that people get that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hard to disagree with that. Uh, and I'm guessing you're replying to that. I deep like, yeah, they got some good pasta out there. I feel you on that, Finn Ron. <laughs> uh, yeah, stand your ground. A lot of spineless individuals walking around right now for a fact. Yep. Same here. Nah, I've never felt the need or see the point. It's it's a waste of time. Uh. <laughs> Yo, great comment. That pothole sneak out of night and plant a tree in it. Word. Solo que tiene esta meeting en español y mucha gente necesita tu conocimiento. ¿Cómo estamos, José Martínez? Yeah, uh, entiendo eso. Estoy streaming con, o transmitiendo con Johnny Aguilar eh, todos los miércoles en su canal a las 7 de la noche eh, en la zona del este, para los que hablan español, para que estén atentos. So, estoy sintonizado por esa vía. Eh, es que nada más tengo tanto tiempo para poder transmitir y ya tengo mucho transmisión en inglés. O sea, me hace más difícil hacer muchas cosas en español, pero vamos a ver cómo eso va cambiando con el tiempo, porque definitivamente se necesita más conocimiento de todo tipo por todo lado del mundo. Muchas gracias por tu comento, José. Muy agradecido. Uh, thank you, Hexhound. We do try to speak truth over here. The self sovereign is where it's at. For sure. Now let's get back to the goodies, right? Uh, federal government current expenditures, right? Now let's get back to this. Um, now, the reason I have this up is because I want to show you guys this. And this is basically what I want to highlight. Mandatory expenditures, and this is what this basically is. Where'd it go? Um, this is what basically this is. Current expenditures is what they have to spend money on, right? Medicare and uh, mandatory expenditures such as Social Security, Medicare, and SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, which is just another word for food stamps, account for about 60% of the budget. Now, you guys are probably wondering, damn, is that true? Well, let's see. Oh, well, there you go. 5.1 trillion divided by now this is exactly what we just read right mandatory expenditures such as social security medicare and snap food stamps account for about 60 percent of the budget okay so here we got 5163 8171 let's do some math <clears throat> you know me i like to do some math 51 71 divided by 8173. Is that what it was? 8171. I might have got it backwards. 5163. How'd that happen? I got that wrong. No, All right. Good enough. 83%. So it seems like that's right, right? Current expenditures, what they have to spend right now. Uh, transfer payments, government social benefits to persons. It's exactly what we were just talking about. So there you go. And we're at an all-time high as of Q1 2021. And this is where the taxes go, right? <clears throat> this is when they printed last year at the start of 2020, all-time high, right? And this is where all the taxes go, right? They out here taking your money and handing it out, just not to you and not to the people that need it. That's just what they want you to think. Um, and this is why I think I'm going to have to do a two part stream here because, I mean, this could really be a three part stream because there's so much information um, from this aspect of the financial markets that are just missing in people's psyche because they don't understand, like, how can a federal surplus or deficit be this negative. 
Like, look at the upside. It's never been that high. How the fuck can it be this negative? Right? Like, this shit is crazy. Right? This is crazy. Three trillion in deficit. Like, how is this okay? And yet we're printing dollars, getting taxed into oblivion, right? And it's got to be lower now. I mean, odds are they don't even update this chart anymore. Because there's a couple of charts I'm going to show you guys that don't update anymore. And that's why I have them in the order that, they, that I have them. Because uh, they don't update anymore. We're going to see that. Um, federal government current tax receipts. So this is what the government is currently receiving in terms of taxes. And I'm even amazed it's as high as it is. Uh, this must be what they're printing. Because I, I don't know who the hell's paying it. Because, I, I, I mean, you guys know that corporations don't really pay taxes like that, right? Like, th th until 2020 or until 2018, 2017, I can't really remember exactly, whenever Trump updated the tax laws after he came into office, companies didn't really pay any taxes at all. Corporations didn't really pay any corporate tax because they could just write everything off. And that's something that most people don't even know. Uh... You know, a lot of people think Trump was doing bad things, but he was actually doing good things. And all you got to do is check the tape. Like, look at what Biden is doing now, which is reversing everything that Trump did as fast as he can. And look at what Trump did. Right. Trump was doing things like putting money back in your pocket. Right. And this was before Rona. Like he was trying to put money back in people's pockets for real. Right. And those are the facts. And, and I don't like Trump. Those are just the facts. I'm not a political anything. I don't give a fuck. You know, I'm, I don't need nobody to tell me anything. I, I know how to carry myself. I know what's right and what's wrong. I know what being a human being is. I know what, what loving is, right? I know what being sad is and all that, right? And that's, that's, that's a function of being empathetic, being sympathetic to another human being, right? Like we're all human. And I think people forget that we all just need to be human sometimes and not, uh, be so caught up in nonsense like material crap and and just shit like that just shit that doesn't matter right because at the end of the day that that all that fancy shit it ain't going with you you ain't doing nothing with that but you know what are you doing with that you're not doing anything with that so you know keep all that in mind guys when we're talking about you know building wealth in the future and all of that Keep in mind what's important <clears throat> and definitely catch Maddie streams when it comes to mental health and wealth, because it's supreme. It's number one. You cannot keep money, right? Making it is easy, but even making it is hard if you don't have the right mental makeup, right? Because let me tell you, it's, it's a well-known fact that you can give a thousand people the secret to becoming rich. And only one person will actually get there. It's well-known fact. It's documented. It's been tested over and over and over. You can Google it. You don't got to take my word for it. Google it, duck, duck, go it. Find it somewhere where you can, where there's valuable information that is verifiable. Find it ver in, in a verifiable point of information, and you will see that that is the case. Now, that's something, right? Because what are we going to do with this information, Right? How do we know that, like, just look at this chart. This is insane. This is since 1950. Like, the chart before this, all time. The chart before this, since 1950. The chart before this, all time, right? And and GDP didn't start getting tracked until 1930, after the Great Recession, or the Great Depression. Um, <clears throat> like, where is all this money going? Right. And the thing that people have to remember is that this is literally a function of the unit of account. Right. Like, this is why I want people to really understand what I'm saying. And this is why I started with inflation first. Because inflation is the key to understanding everything. Right. Inflation is letting you know where you're getting robbed left and right, not taxes. Taxes is getting taxes is you getting stuck up in your face. Taxes is when you're getting stuck up and you walking around and you you like, oh shit, all right, man, my bad, my bad. Here, you got it, you got it. That's what taxes are. 
Inflation is that stealth robbery that you don't even see coming because you're just using the same trash to, to try to obtain the same goods and you can't, right? So this is why we're looking at these things in this order. And I hope that that makes sense because that's my intention. Um, so these are the tax receipts, right? These are what the federal government is currently receiving in tax receipts. Now, this is crazy. Like, how, the, how are we at an all-time high? That's baffling to me, right? So, so then the next question is, well, where are they getting these tax receipts from? Like, what, what, is, what is it that they're counting exactly, right? That's the next question. Um, and maybe I'll do a further deep dive into that just to break that down. But let's keep it going. Um, foreign debt held, federal debt held by foreign and international investors, $7 trillion, all time high. Now, if we look at this chart, look at when it started. Now, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but back in August 15th, 1971, the U.S. technically defaulted on its gold promises. Now, why am I mentioning this? I'm mentioning this because this is the actual start of all the inflation that matters, meaning the currency inflation, right? And that is what this is all about, right? So before then, foreign and international investors didn't have to hold federal debt, i.e. U.S. treasuries, because it wasn't necessary. The gold was a unit of account. So at this point in time, the dollar switched and became the unit of account. That's what this means, right? And then with that, all you're seeing here is a perpetual buying of promises because every U.S. Treasury bill, every U.S. Treasury note, every U.S. Treasury bond is just a promise to receive payment in kind in the future, right? Whether it be in another bond bill note or the equivalent of a currency amount, right? And that value is going to change over time with respect to that unit of account. And that unit of account is trash. That's why you go from zero to seven trillion. It's not because that real demand is there, right? That's how you go from zero to five trillion because that unit of account is trash, right? <clears throat> Government, current expenditures, income security, welfare and social services, again, all time high. And, and you better believe it's gotta be at least half a trillion, if not a trillion by now, because they started counting, they stopped counting it in 2019. How convenient. How convenient. Again, budget outlays, federal government expenditures, they stopped tracking it in Q4 2019. How convenient. 1.1 trillion. And look, it clearly wasn't slowing down anytime soon. So this is all to say, this is how it started, right? This is This is the currency. Consumer price index for all urban consumers, purchasing power of the consumer dollar in U.S. city average. We started January 19th using 1982 to 1984 as a base level of 100. Now, this is all the way the hell over here, <laughs> by the way. Right. This is 100. So at the start of this game. The dollar was worth 10 times more than the base measure, which is 1984. I really want you guys to get this chart because this shit here is crazy. Right? This shit here is crazy. Um, and it's important to understand this again because, you know, this is the start of the dollar's value. It was a thousand on an index basis when it first came out in 1913 in the current form in the Federal Reserve note form, right? Because it was it was at least backed by something at that point in time, but that was on and off, right? This is why the value has decreased over time, right? We started at a thousand versus 
the start of it, 1913, how it's going. Now, the question then becomes, well, <clears throat> how much have we lost in percentage terms? Right? This is crazy. So let's find out. Let's see. 1017, 37. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did the math wrong here. New minus old. <laughs> so there you go. That's how much the value of dollar has decreased since the uh, the Fed was introduced in 1913. So your your dollar is king has decreased 96 percent since it first came into existence. This is what these two graphics are telling you: how it started at a thousand in 1913 versus the index base of the years of 1982 to 1984, where it's 100, meaning the value started 10 times higher back in 1913 versus the present day value uh, in May 2021, which was just last month, 37.1 on the index basis. So that's a drop of 96% since inception. That's your fiat king dollar for you. And that is all a function of the monetary system within which it lives, where it's always getting taxed and it's always getting inflated against. Now, one chart that I didn't include, which I should have, let me show it now. Um, do I have this open? No, I don't. So it was... Um, let's see here. Give me a second, guys. I just want to find this one chart that's supremely important. Here we go. Oh, no, that's not it. Ready to change. Where are you? This is it. Nope. I think this is it. Yep, this is it. All right. Should have included this. Um, but it's all right. We can talk about it just like here. So I've talked about this chart before, but it's been a while. But this is the chart that pretty much helped me figure out everything I just explained to you guys um, over the past 18 slides, right? This chart is what kind of set me on this path to figuring out all of this about inflation and all of that, right? I mean, it was really the chart before, but this chart is really the key. Because it shows you, like, if you understand integration, now let's look up what integration is. Because I want people to understand <clears throat> what I'm talking about. That's a horrible definition. Okay. Okay. So integrals and maps are used to find many useful quantities, such as areas, volumes, displacement, etc. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, it doesn't say the real basic thing. Uh, this is why I don't like freaking. All right. So the whole point of it is, is that when. Uh, hold on, guys.
So the whole point of it is, is that integration is about looking at the area underneath the curve, right? So for GDP, Jesus. All right, hold on, guys, because this is really pissing me off. Let me just put this in the PowerPoint because I don't, I don't, I keep dealing with this. Just give me a second. Second. All right. Boom. Okay. Okay. So the area under the curve, right? So we got GDP here. GDP is a blue line. Um, and the purchasing power of the dollar which is this chart is a red line. So how did this chart end up looking like this, right? Important to remember that this is a percentage change from a year ago. So it was again, the rate of change and the rate of change is really the key for understanding things. Um, you know, the rate of change is really what's going to give you that that vantage point that you need right because that vantage point is really the difference between you know you choosing hex and you choosing something else and that's just a simple fact of the matter and with the previous price action that we've seen over the past couple months three months whatever have you i think we've all learned that that's a very important distinction to, to make you know it's it's very important um <clears throat> So when we're looking at the blue line, we're seeing that the blue line is constantly above zero, right? Constantly above zero. So the time spent above zero for the blue line is greater than the time spent above zero for the red line, right? That's really all integration is talking about from this perspective, right? Because that's what we want to look at. We want to look at how often is zero above, or I'm sorry, how often is red above the zero? And how often is zero is blue above the zero? That's going to give us an indication of the reflexivity of the value of that metric over time, right? Is it staying positive or is it staying negative? So in this instance, the blue line, which is GDP, is consistently positive. But what do we know about GDP? We know that GDP is merely the value of all the goods produced, not the unit of a not the unit of all goods produced, but the dollar value. So what does that mean? Why does that matter? Well, how else does GDP continually go up? How, how else is inflation good unless it's mass via the guise that GDP is good as long as it goes up? Does that make sense? Right? Does, does that make sense? Cause that's the, that's the smoking gun, right? Like if, if we were in a courtroom and somebody wants me to prove how the hell GDP is a lie, all I got to do is pull out all the headlines where these people say inflation is good. Show this chart, right? This is one of two. Then come back and hold on. Let me, let me get, let me get right. So that chart, then show this chart after making that statement because that's exactly what we have shown here right exactly that now let me just throw this in the powerpoint just for to make it clean <clears throat> like i really want people to internalize this and understand it because this is really the smoking gun right this is how we are fully aware, fully abreast. This is this was really the light. This was when I was like, holy shit, I discovered Mecca, right? Because at the end of the day, the data only tells you what you can determine from the data, right? So GDP, it continuously goes up as long as what happens? The dollar is continuously going down. Right. 
This is what it's all about. This is why inflation at 2% is good because inflation at 2% keeps GDP going up. You understand? This is the best kept secret in economics, best kept secret in finance. This is what they do not want you to know the next time you hear the words GDP. They want you to get excited. They want you to think, yes, inflation is great. Inflation is going to get me paid. Well, that's only true in hex. It's not true in the fiat world. In the fiat world, there is no measuring stick to provide that value proposition to that currency. So there is no basis upon which earning any extra fiat provides any actual value. And this is what people don't understand. Because at the end of the day, you still need more fiat. No matter how many fiat you earn, unless you magically earn an outsized proportion, right? You, you're going to always need to earn more fiat. You're always going to be behind. That is literally the tenant of time value of money. That's what it's all about, right? And this chart highlights exactly how they go about doing it. Once you connect the dots, and what are the dots? The dots are the fact that the purchasing power of the dollar has lost 96% since inception, right? How it started at 1,000, how it's going 37 versus index of 100, right? So just on an index basis, from its starting line, not including the starting point in time, just the starting line, it's lost 63%, right? Not including the simple fact that it's actually lost all of this from over here. It's crazy, right? And the question is how? Well, it's because over time, the dollar is kept down, right? The dollar is kept down in value over time consistently, consistently, consistently. And this is what gives you this gargantuan rise in GDP because you have to remember the value of GDP is given to you in dollars, right? And just like the value of assets have increased over the past 10 years, right, to the tune of crazy values relative to previous history, then it only reasons that this is the cause for all price increases, all of them, stocks, bonds, whatever have you. Because the dollar is constantly going down, and that is the unit of account, right? That is a unit of account. So when you're accounting for something and something that's always going down in value, that thing is always... Give me a second, guys. Yeah. Um... So that's something to understand, right? That unit of account is what's determining the growth. Because if you're accounting for this in gold, well, it's not going to look the same. If you're accounting for this in oil, it's not going to look the same. Because they have a specific value versus this GDP as an asset, right? Because it's just accounting for the valuation of those goods in dollars. It's not actually accounting for those goods as be that are being made in terms of units, so we don't actually know if the demand is true, right? Because they try to play it off as if it's a function of demand, but it's not. That's a function of just a unit of account and how the, ma how the math is done. The methodology is where the trick is in most of these instances. And we clearly saw that in 2020 all the time. All the time we saw that in 2020. So um, that's pretty much it as far as the inflation and taxes, I hope. This was um, good for you guys as it was for me because uh, <laughs> it's really important information that has to get out there. Um, right now, I'll take a little break, do some questions, um, and then we'll get into the end of this and wrap it up um, with the charts. Um, and let's see what you guys got here um, as far as questions goes. Um, oh, wow. We've been pumping. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, I've been all in my feelings with this uh, stream here. Give me a second. Oof. Very nice. Very, very nice. 8.7 cents. 
8.712697 cents. Very nice. Uh, here we go. Bitcoin or Ethereum rolling over, not looking too hot. And again, it's about those moving averages, guys. They they, they got to get above those moving averages. You know, until those moving averages are not usurped, it's just Hail Mary, right? It's just maybe they'll get above there, maybe they won't. Um, you know, Bitcoin again, still looking weak. You know, and it's again, it's about understanding the probabilities, the scenarios, what's going on in the chart, all those good things. Um, very important to understand. All right. Um, where was I? Yeah. So let's keep going through the chat, see if I got any questions that I missed. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. What's going on, Finn Bear? Good morning, brother. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, debt persistence is crazy. So let's go to US National Debt Clock.org. I think that's the name of it. <clears throat> um, debt per citizen is 85,000. Yep, 228 bucks. Um, revenue per citizen. So, yeah, there you go. I mean, that's a hell of a, of a debt to equity ratio, right? That's basically what that is. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is just freaking funny. You know, you, you can't operate like this, right? You make $10,000 a month, but spend 85000 Let me know where you can do that at. I'll move right there. It's insane. Um, all right, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, he wanted to go Amazon because they didn't pay anything. That's right. This is a, but that's the thing, right? Like the tax code. So this is, this is the thing that people need to understand about the tax code. It's written for corporations. It's not written for people. So if you want to beat the system, start an LLC, right? Learn wealth management strategies, uh, 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 asset protection strategies, you know, all that stuff is, an, is a, a function of protecting your assets, paying less taxes, you know, figuring out the name of the game, how to play the game, how to play the, what the rules of the game are, all of that stuff is tied to that. Um, no, thank you guys for joining the stream and listening up. I appreciate you guys sticking with me for a whole two and a half hours as that's how long it's been. Um, weird kind of how this uh, economic fraud could have developed that far. Imagine in the 1913s, I don't think the U.S. dollar and the laws around it could be set without resistance. Credit. Yeah, no, you know what's funny? That's a fact because back then people were very, very uh, in tune with the central bank. And, and you can see it in a lot of the satire and a lot of the comic strips that are in existence from that era, um, you can see it. Like people are well aware of what the deal was, right? Like the octopus. Uh, man, I really gotta find these. Gra like, there's a lot of good pieces, and I'll probably do a little, uh, a little, a stream on economic history. I'm very, very big on that. This is how I know so much because I really studied my economic history. Um, when I used to want to be a, a PhD in economics, uh, that was one of the fields I intended to go into because as with everything, in order to know that in order, in order, in order to be successful at it, you have to know the history of it. Otherwise you're just going to be flying blind. You know, you, you, you're just pissing in the wind. Um, so it's important to understand that. Um, no, there are no taxes on the moon as far as I know, but leave it to humans. They'll find a way to fuck that up. Um, <laughs> what's popping with? Where do you get those charts from? Um, what's going on, Crumb de la Crumb? Uh, those charts are from St. Louis Fed. Let me show you. I'll throw it in the chat actually, so you guys can have the source. Um, there we go, St. Louis Fred.org. I'll put it in the show notes as well. Um, yeah. And here's the National Debt Clock link. I put that in the show notes as well. <clears throat> oh, you're welcome, Crumb de la Crumb. You're welcome. Um, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, this is the real stuff. This is the real stuff. Um, my real stuff here. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Talk about amazing wake up, right? Some shit. 
Um, inflation rate hit the roof when it took us off the gold standard in the 70s, correct? And you see that, right? You see that in so many instances. Like, just look at this here. This is literally when a dollar really, like, all right. <laughs> like, not only did it stay negative after 1970, it went further negative after 1970, right? And that's that reflexive motion that kind of put the dollar in kind of like the death grip. And it was never going to come up from that ever again. Um, no father in the dime. Yeah, exactly. And this is why there's no father in the dime. Yeah. I mean, there's really very few. Um, everything. There shouldn't be legal tender. Yeah, well, that's the funny thing, right? This is, again, what governments do just to exercise control over things. Um, there shouldn't be legal tender. Everything people accept is money. You decide what money you want to use, not the government's. USD could be an imaginary benchmark in the future. Well, the difference between the USD and monopoly money is what was printed on it. There is no difference. So keep that in mind. Uh, what's going on, Culture Critique? Thanks for coming through, brother. Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, I see that, man. All the time how I missed it. I was too busy yapping. Um, let's see, let's see. When wolf comes, when wolf comes, control it, don't let it control you. That's right. Um, I have seen the tail wagging the dog. Money does not make you. That's right. Don't forget that, guys. Money is nothing. It's just a tool. Yeah, that's a fact, D'Artagnan. That's a fact. That's why you got to keep it real. If you ain't real now, you ain't going to be real then. So, <laughs> yeah, me too, right? Me too. Uh-huh. No one in my town knows I don't hold. Yep, yep. And this is what OPSEC is all about, you know? It's all about keeping yourself in check, keeping your privacy in check, keeping your mind in check, right? Like, it's cool to be rich, but it's cooler to get richer and stay rich. You know what I'm saying? Those are the facts. Uh, so make sure you, you know, you trust yourself first and foremost and treat everybody else with a nice, hefty three arms length of skepticism. Um, pro tip. Because when people know you got money, everything changes. Everything changes. Just what it is. Um, thank you, Blue Bomb. Thank you for letting me know that it makes sense. If anything didn't make sense, please let me know. Um, I will definitely break it down. So, Piss and Broke asks, so why do people pay taxes freely, time for a reset, and how is that accomplished? Yeah, so this is all a function of education, right? Um, that's primarily the goal of my streams is to educate people on what taxes are, where they come from, where they go. And I mean, this, this, this inflation of taxes type of topic, right? Like it could be almost eight streams because there's so much information on it, right? Like you guys saw all the different types of taxes that there were income, payroll, corporate, uh, transactional, um, you know, whatever else is on that list. Like it's, it's like, how many taxes do you really need? And then they're still trying to create more, Right. Like, where does it end? Do you just want my whole paycheck and you just want me to just do stuff like I'm in jail? Like, that's the next, like, that's literally the next step. What else is there? Tell me. I don't know because I don't see it, right? It's crazy, man. Yeah, so this is it, right? And this is what I'm talking about. It's about education, once people become educated on how things are actually set up and how things are actually written and how things actually work, then you have the power to say no. And once that consensus grows, guess what? They have to tail, they have to tuck tail between the legs and walk away. Pretty simple. Um, and yeah, this is it. That's the quickest shortcut. And this is why crypto is so dangerous, right? Like I know you guys have heard, uh, let's, Go to IMF horns. Um. <laughs> so hold on. Uh, let's talk about this for a second because this is actually cool. 
Um, I didn't intend to do this. Let me uh, zoom this in a little bit, just because this is cool. Oh, OK, that didn't work. That's great. Um, but yeah, so check this out, right? This is real time live on the chat, uh, on the stream, whatever. I'm going to take a screenshot of this because I use DuckDuckGo. I don't have any settings saved. Um, so this is just what the general search is, which is interesting. Um, so let's pull this up. IMF warns the recession, and I've talked about this numerous times. IMF warns a recession, warns Great Depression, warns slowdown, warns a financial crisis, right? I've talked about this numerous times, right? They're out here telling you to look left while they want you to look right, but they're also telling you what they're actually doing. So, you know, it's, it's things like that that are important to pay attention to. Um, Juan's El Salvador. Let's see what we find here. Yeah. So this is this is what I'm talking about, right? And this is what Blue Bum is talking about. I have a different unit of account, and this is what they don't want. <laughs> I mean, it's hilarious. All they've done is down talk it, and here it is happening in their face. And the reality is that there's nothing they can do about it. You know, good fucking luck. You got to fight all of us. And let me tell you, there's not enough of them. I used to work for them. I know. If you work for the government at any level, you work for them. Period. Whether you know it or not, doesn't matter. Fact. You don't got to like it. Just deal with it. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's uh, these emergency on stakes have been crazy lately. I don't even know. I don't even know. Yep, exactly. The Great Reset is good for the people on the top of the pyramid. The rest of us get wrecked, and this is why being in crypto is so important. When you're in crypto, you're avoiding that. You're you have a different unit of account, and that's what you need, right? This is how you avoid it. Um. It's important to understand that. Important to understand that. Um, you know, I don't really use uh, Fizz Biffiness. The way I use them um, is literally 75, 50%, 25. I don't really buy into the whole, well, not so much buy into. I just don't feel the need to because I'm not, I don't trade them. Um, I'm using my stacked indicators to determine a top or a bottom, and it just so happens that the the values that they attain are similar, right? So if you use fibs, knock yourself out. Um, if not, you know, whatever. Um, there's just so many ways to break the market down, right? Um, and that's the thing. Like, Fibonacci levels are cool, but, you know, are you talking about Ethereum, are you talking about Bitcoin? Because for Hex, that's literally redundant. Like Hex isn't stopping anything. And it's not, you know, and if it hits a 61.8 retracement level, great. But, you know, how often is it really going to do that? Probably not that often because you guys already see that the dips was, you know. <laughs> sure, you funny, bro. <laughs> you funny. <laughs> um, yeah, that's cool, man. Just just watch the replay. Um, you know, some dude took eight hundred dollars and turned it two hundred fifty million. <laughs> what? Let me get that link, bro. I want to see that one. <laughs> Let me see that one. Word. That's crazy. Yeah, he might not, actually, while you're bullshitting. He might not. Um, might not. Um, yeah, you would think, right? You would think. If you go to 2025, you can see the savings per person on 500K. Yeah, it's definitely going that way, right? Like, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Uh, well, I think the dollar's already been in the currency crisis. Um, 
you know, let's just, we don't even really need to look far. We can just look at this charts, right? Like, the only reason the dollar is still standing is because it's a unit of account globally. If it wasn't, it wouldn't even matter. Um, you know, nobody would care. So it would just be like any other currency. And the central bank of their respective currency would be trying to prop it up, right? And that's what all of this 2% inflation is, literally. That's all that is, is them propping it up and you don't even know it. Um, you know what I mean? So, uh, I, you know, while I agree with busting them up, the only aspects I'd nationalize are like the data point aspects, right? But again, do you really need people to oversee data that's just sitting there? You don't really need that. You shouldn't need it. The only thing you should really need is for people to, you know, scrub the data, make sure it's clean. Like there should really be nothing else done with the data. It's just data. Like it's just numbers, metrics, whatever it is, right? Metadata, whatever data. You're welcome, dude. And thank you to everybody for coming. Um, you know, this is, uh, uh -huh. you're welcome, brother. You're welcome, Finbear. Um, you know, this is just me trying to share what I know and give you guys the evidence to back it up because it's easy to talk, but you know, the data is there. It's not easy to find. I understand that. So, you know, I gave it to you. I put the links in the show notes. You guys just do the search, right? When you do the search in this, in this specific website, the St. Louis Fed, Fred, all you're doing is say, for example, you want to look up federal net outlays. You can just type in federal. And that word will prompt all of the, most of the charts that are tied to that, right? Like federal net, right? And it'll bring up all the assets that have those terms in it. So that's how that site works just for completeness sake. Just everybody's aware of that. Um, but yeah, all of this stuff, right? It's a function of what they're doing to the dollar. Literally, it's the only way. It's really, really the only way. Um, and maybe instead of going through charts tonight, I'll do a chart set video. What do you guys think? Because this is already running three hours. I don't mind doing a chart set video. Seems like everybody kind of likes them um, independently. So I don't mind doing that. Uh, you guys let me know. Um, otherwise, I can just keep going and do the charts. No big deal. Because um, we're, we're at 245. Um, and I like to keep these kind of short, not too long. Um so, yeah, just understanding that the dollar devaluation is really the key to everything, right? This is why uh, stocks are up, right? Like, let's pull up this chart. Like, all right, let's pull this chart up. You know, I got I got a good one here because this is this is really a good one. Now that I think about it, um, I'm going to edit line one. Line one is GDP. So what line one needs to be is just something else. All right, so I'm going to remove this. Um, let's type in S&P 500, add data series. Ah, oh, come on, man. Not even a long one. This is crap. Get out of here. So let's try to see if we can find a different one. Yeah, no, they don't have it. Jesus Christ. All right. Well, you guys know what the S&P 500 looks like, right? Let's just look at it for the past little bit of time that we got here because this is so booty. Uh, let me change the scaling. There we go. Um, so I was just going to show this really on a bigger scale, but it's the same story, right? Dollar going down, asset going up, right? This is what it's all about, guys. This is why they keep printing. Um, they already are, right? Think about it like T-shares, right? Um, T-shares are a function of a pool, right? When you own T-shares, that means you have a certain amount of that pool claimed. So you're going to receive whatever happens in that pool multiplied by X, whatever you own, right? X is whatever percentage of the pool you own. 
So say, for example, the payout today was 70 million hex and you own, say, 10 basis points or 0.01% of that pool, one basis point, right? You're going to get a payment in line with that, right? And then it's just going to only be divided by the T-shares. And the T-shares are just a function of the pool at that point in time. That's that's really what's going on, right? So it's important to understand that. Um, so we don't get carried away with with under without understanding correctly what is going on. Um, because this is really it, guys. I mean, it's it's crazy that people think that they're killing the game when they're not, they're just getting robbed. Right? And it's hard to explain that to people, but I really hope I relayed that, or at least conveyed it in some type of shape or form, because this is what I really want people to understand. This is why the unit of account, as Blue Bum mentioned earlier in the chat, is critical, right? Critical. Change the unit of account and you have saved yourself from a lot of heartache and pain. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, Bitcoin Buck. Really appreciate it, brother. Um, <clears throat> yep, look up the truth never told. Uh, it sounds like that's a book, but... Uh, <laughs> it kind of works in general, right? Because it's really what it is. Uh, thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. And yes, this is free 99. There's nothing, uh, no charge here. Um, I just appreciate your guys' attention and, and your guys' question because at the end of the day, right, what I'm talking about is stuff that I've researched and I found to be true, right? Things change all the time. And, you know, you never know, right? And this is a function of that because it's funny now, but uh, it might not be funny later. Thank you, Creme de la Creme. Much respect to you, brother. Uh, let's see. I don't want to lose this chat. It's where they go. Uh... <laughs> Thank you, Bitcoin Buck. Uh, I, I appreciate the sentiment, man, but nobody owes me anything. You know, people just... You know, so let me let me talk about that because I really kind of want to make that clear, right? Like my prerogative is simple. Um, you know, you know, the more we know collectively, the better decisions we make collectively, right? Um, and we see this in the hexagon community all the time. Uh, you know, somebody wants to do something, somebody mentions it, somebody does it, whatever have you, right? It just, it gets done. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, everybody really wants to do the best thing for themselves. Everybody wants to succeed to one degree or another, right? The only difference is they don't know exactly how, exactly what, exactly whatever. But the reason for that is because there's not, they're not given the opportunity to try to find out, but that's a whole nother conversation, right? The whole gist of what I'm trying to say is this. The more we know about what we need to know, the better decisions we make, the better life, the better life we all have. Because guess what? When we put the people in check that need to be put in check, life is good. You don't have a face diaper, right? You don't have some moron telling you what is good for you to do and what's not good for you to do, what is good for you to buy and what's not good for you to buy, where it's good for you to go buy it and where it's not good for you to go buy it. Like this is what's actually happening in 2020, 2021 in America, right? Or in the world, period. And that shit is crazy, right? So me sharing what I know is the least I can do in order to get people on the right track to where we need to go because we do have a long way to go. Look at what we've been living through just in the past 10 years. This is just the past 10 years, guys. This is just the past 10 years, right? And, and the value of the dollar on a basis of 100 on the index dropped from 44 to where it's at now, or at this reading when it was right here, a 38.4, whatever it is, right? But that's six divided by 44, that's more than 10%, right? That's at least 12, 15% decrease in 10 years in the value of a currency. And you're over here talking about you're beating inflation. Get the fuck out of here. You're not beating shit. You're getting beat inside the fucking head 
with taxes. You're going to beat upside the head with fucking inflation. You're going to beat upside the head with the cost of assets. You're going to beat upside the head all kind of fucking ways. And you can't even tell because it's so many different ways. And that's the reality, right? That's why I'm doing all this detailed stuff because this is shit that I see that other people just don't see for one reason or another. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to have the time to see it because most people haven't had the time to see it, right? And I spent a long time trying to figure this shit out because I spent a long time trying to trade, trying to trade markets, trying to understand it. And understanding it, oddly enough, is what lets me talk about Hex how I do. Because it's that confidence that I have about knowing all these different things that you guys are now knowing or I'm sharing with you guys is what allows me to just do it, right? Because it's easy to do it, but doing it well and doing it right, two different things. And sharing the critical information, helping you guys understand that Hex is the place to be, for example, or crypto in general, if you're not a Hex fan and you just happen to be passing by, right? Because everybody isn't going to want to like Hex and that's fine. But you got to understand what time it is, because at the end of the day, crypto or bust, right? Because if it's not crypto, then that means that something drastic happened and we don't have anything anyway. Because we're clearly an electronic society, a technologically advanced society, as far as using devices goes and leaning on them, right? Because analog is not a thing people like to do like people are very dumb about that but that's okay they'll learn the hard way that's fine um not gonna get into that but they'll learn um but the whole point about it is is that you know be sure and be clear right the dollar is like every other reserve currency that's existed it has a terminal endpoint and it's usually 50 to 60, 70 years. That's it. We're already at 50 years with respect to how it currently exists, which is how it's existed since 1971, August 15. So we're two months away in two days from that point in time, 50 years to the date. So while, um, who was it? While Lee Akita thinks that there might be a currency crisis in 2023, I'm thinking we might see one sooner because why wait? We already been waiting for 50 years. What's another couple months, right? Like why, why wait to 2023? They printed trains of dollars last year. <laughs> not even the, not even five, you know, not, not even are going to like, they already did it. Right. So, you know, thank you, Bitcoin buck. I appreciate the sentiment, man. You know, so understanding all of that, right? Like, it, it, it's a lot, I know. But you got to try to wrap all your head around it so you have the same level of confidence that I do. Because let me tell you, I was a person that didn't buy Bitcoin when he had the chance to at zero. At zero. At zero. It was so hard to buy Bitcoin at that point in time. At zero. Right. And here we are with Hex. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Right. And Hexagons are going to be the one group that you're going to see that they're still going to be around in 10, 15 years, assuming the Internet's still around because the value is going nowhere. The value is going digital. How is everything else getting vaporized and digitized? But value and money is not. Of course, it's going to be. Don't be ridiculous. Of course, humans are digitizing everything. Why not money? Right. It only makes sense. So it's important to understand that. It's important to understand that. Let's keep going through the chat. Yep. Pretty much. I like us that clock dog or for that reason. It, it hasn't changed. It's pretty much boilerplate stuff. Um, you know what I mean? So you're welcome, Mel Carter. And thank you guys again for watching. I appreciate you guys. It's still 90 people watching, man. It's been pretty consistent. 90 people. So thank you guys for watching. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I hope so, man. I hope so, because this is my goal. My goal is to just educate people about the right stuff 
so that they make the right decisions is, you know, it's not about me. Uh, it's about everybody else. Cause again, I already know all this stuff. I'm not doing myself any favors except for st stress testing what I know, which I already do. Uh, so, you know, again, sharing this information is really only going to improve my life by allowing you guys to see what's going on and allowing you to make the same decisions that I would make, because that's all it's about, because everybody wants the best for themselves. And I know that if you knew you would make that choice, you would not make the choice that's not for you. Right. And it's really that simple, man. I mean, it, it, it it's not more complicated than that for me like it's pretty straightforward you know and 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 i just hope everybody appreciates that and takes it for what it is because at the end of the day a lot of what you know i don't know and a lot of what i know you don't know and i'm willing to learn if you're willing to and that's all it is and everybody has something to offer yeah uh it really is yeah uh you know i and again i'm not here to bash you know people pay taxes because they've been brainwashed to do so right um I get into this nonsense. It's complete bullshit. Um, because you know we're all brainwashed to do to do and think a lot of things, um, and it just doesn't work, right? It just it does not work. It does not work. So, you know, keeping that type of shit in mind, you know, please do. Uh, you know, read the tax code, people. Promise you, you won't be disappointed. It's thick, man, but. You know, just find the resources that you need to get through it. It's it's edible, it's legible, it's everything, man. Trust me, you will not be disappointed when you know the rules of the game. And that's what I'll say. So thoughts on basic income. And I'm guessing you mean uh, the the free money when they just give it out, uh, basic user universal income or whatever. Um, <clears throat> it's bullshit, right? Because all that does is that the incentivizes humans to be human. Period. And I think that's pretty straightforward. It clearly does. Because what you're doing is you're incentivizing laziness. You're incentivizing no activity. Just people to sit there, watch TV, twirl their thumbs, play on the internet, yada, yada. We don't got time for that. We got shit to do. Check out pre-research or presearch.org for a good search engine. Thank you, Blue Bum. I was not familiar with that one. <clears throat> I will take all the penalty coins. That's right. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah, I don't think so, man. It's not that simple. It, 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 it's just not that simple, especially in today's age. Nah, like you got to know how they're set up. It's just they won't work like that. No, nah. because you got to realize, right? Even on the inside, I was on the inside. You think there's not going to be other people like there in there like me? Of course. But they're going to be outnumbered. That's all. Um, yeah, 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 yep, rightfully so, rightfully so, crazy time, some people are even afraid to have kids these days, in a certain future, that's right, that's right, yeah, well, this is the thing, that's exactly right, that's exactly right, um, I've been a contrarian all my life as well, a uh, Bitcoin buck, and I've always wondered if anything was going to change because let me tell you guys, like I say all the time, um, you know, I spent 20 plus years talking to myself, right? And now it's to the point that even my own sister is hearing me, right? People are calling me. People are reaching out to me. People are fucking finally seeing, holy shit, you were right. Holy shit, this. Holy shit, that. And it's not about me. You know, it's about the simple fact of the matter that we are all here collectively living the same experience. And if we don't care enough, somebody like they've been doing is going to do whatever they want. And that's the problem. We've been allowing them to do whatever they want for no reason. No reason for that. We can we can all do better because we all know better and we all want better. Period. I grew up in a place where the mechanic for my father's car when I was a kid was a crackhead, man. A crackhead. Straight up, crackhead. Like, that's real. And the dude was good. But he was a crackhead. Why? Because that's what society wanted at that time. 
Why? Because we let it happen. We are the change or we're not the change. That's what it is. That's the whole point. Right? And and Hex allows me the opportunity to relay this appropriate information because at the end of the day, we're all going to be people that are going to be powerful folks one day because we're going to have the tools and the resources to make shit happen. And if we really want things to change, it's going to be on us to change it. It's not going to be changed because we want it to. It's going to be changed because we want it to change and we're going to make it change. So that's important to realize. Um, okay, so I'm on YouTube at YouTube.com com forward slash wells only i'm also on twitter at uh wells only one um and i'll put that hold on real quick uh oh i thought i would show my name i guess not all right um hold on maybe it's because i got this highlighted yeah so there you go there's a name on twitter that's wells only on twitter wells only one on twitter on telegram is just t.me forward slash wells only so if you guys ever want to reach out to me, that's how you can do it. Uh, yeah, get your more. You don't have enough. That's for fact. <laughs> uh, thank you guys again. Ian Brut, Brut, hope I said your name right. Brut, I think would be right. Uh, Graphene, thank you guys for coming through. Um, appreciate the sentiment, man. Appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> I don't know about 13 points, but uh, <laughs> appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Mensa. That's a good one. Uh, thank you, Diamond Dad. Uh, appreciate you making the time to, to watch and tune in. Appreciate it. Yeah, man, you guys need to go on ahead and send it. Uh, crypto is where it's at, you know, and Hex is really the, the only crypto in the market because it is the best crypto in the market. You know what I mean? I mean, just, just look at the facts and the figures. It's, it's, it's all there. Um, I appreciate you guys watching for real. Um, all right, let's see. Um, okay, we got a super chat came in. Let's highlight that super chat real quick. Uh, glad to see knowledgeable finance guy on top of things. Keep doing what you were doing. Respect. Thank you, expensive habits or expensive tastes. Sorry. <laughs> uh, although I think we all do have expensive habits, <laughs> which is buying hex, which is getting expensive. Uh, you know, it, it's getting up there. It's getting up there. Uh, eight, eight cents and change where we at right now. Oof. 8.6 cents. Damn. Solidly, too. That thing is showing no mercy. My, oh, my. Oh, we're all time highs, guys. The fuck? Yeah, this is V2. Okay. Hey, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, we'll wrap it up, guys. I'll do a, uh, I'll do a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, chart set chart in the morning. The charts are ready to go, so I just got to do it. Um, so I'll just do it. It's already midnight over here on the East Coast. I don't want to keep people up. Um, I'll just keep going through the chat, make sure we're not missing anything. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, Monday is right around the corner, right? All time high for Hex is like right now. We're right at all time highs. Uh, you know, Mel Tony's been keeping us surprised of the price levels in the chat. Thank you, Mel Tony. We appreciate that for sure. And definitely like and subscribe if you enjoy. I appreciate the viewers as always. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Biff Finesse is a boss. I'm going to have to get Biff Finesse on here because he knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's talking about. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. Yep. Yeah, you know, people always say everything changes that they think that they would not go for money too. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, here we are. There we go. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing, right? <clears throat> um, you know, money does change people, but it's important to understand that money is just a tool, right? If you miss that, man, you're really going to have a hard time. Um. You're going to have a hard time because, you know, money is there to accomplish shit. It's not there for anything else. Uh, it's just there to do things for you. And that's it. Um, you know, don't let it get to you. Like, you know, do what you would normally do if you didn't have to do anything. Like, that's really what money is for. 
You know what I mean? Uh, if you were rich, what would you do? Period. What would you do if you didn't have to pay for it? What would you do if you didn't have to get paid? What would you do if you had nothing but time to do what you wanted? Right? That's what it is. Right? Yeah. And, and pretty much. Right? Uh, inflation is good for them. And that's why, you know, th this is exactly right. All the information I'm showing you can find anywhere. And it's, you're going to end up seeing that the same net is, uh, you know, <laughs> Man, get your fucking crypto on. Stop playing. You know, uh, I, I like the thing is because I made a lot of mistakes. Bitcoin buck. Thank you for the sentiment. I appreciate it. I'm not sure I am that wise, but uh, I do make a lot of mistakes. That's for sure. Uh, thank you, Hexhound. I appreciate the sentiment, man. Honestly, everybody's positive feedback is really, really great. Uh, you know, I've never had this much positive feedback in my life. I'm usually called an asshole or a dickhead. So, hey. Things change eventually, guys. You just got to keep pushing. This is what I mean. This is what I mean. Uh, thank you very much, Finn Bear. Uh, that is the goal, right? The goal is to show people what's right and not what's wrong. Um, one of our hexagons had a very great tweet. I wish I had it. Um, Tantonomy, I think, is his handle. I don't know how to spell it. Um, point is, it was a very prescient tweet in the fact that this pre this recent down move right and bitcoin and ethereum versus hex uh has really highlighted the weakness in the full rule payment structure right these people get paid for their recommendations they're not sitting up here educating anybody on anything they're just getting paid to yap nobody's paying me anything Except for the donations that you guys are graciously giving me, right? Like, that's it. I'm doing this out of my own accord because it's the right thing to do. Because we all need this. I don't need this. I already got this. We all need it. Because that's the only way that is going to help me. I already know. But me knowing it isn't enough. Everybody else has to know. And this is what it's all about. Really, that's really what it's all about. So the next transition will be to Chinese Remini. Yeah, that's what they say. That's what they say. I'm not sure that's going to be the case. What's going on, Johnny? No good. Hope you're doing well, brother. Thank you, Mel Tony, man. Thank you. I try to make all this information really, really powerful, you know, uh, useful, not trying to waste anybody's time because these things run for hours on end for a reason. Um, I try to get as detailed and as, and as logical as possible, right, so that it makes sense, right? Wow. Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate it, Onfi. I really do. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, right? I actually agree with you on that one, Blue Bum. Uh, tons of gold, tons of commodities, period. Like, it's a very well-built currency if you really look at how it works or how their economy works. Thank you, Mel Tony. Honestly, seriously. <clears throat> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Finn Bear. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Well, yeah, I know what you mean. It, it's it's one of the better fiat currencies because it's not really a fiat, and that's the funny thing. Uh, all right. Yeah, universal. That's right. They control everything. That's the goal, man. That's the goal. Yeah. Uh, this is important, right? Because this is what I talk about all the time. People have been doing that. And it's funny because initially Ripple and State and uh, XR, XRP and XLM were supposed to be designed for that. Were the coins that were built for that. They were the stable coins of the time. Um, but, you know, that didn't work out that way. You had USDC and DAI come about and now they're the goes to USDT is the go to as well. Um, and the crash stable coins will fall hard too. I mean, it'd be interesting to see because the only way I see that happening is if they break the buck, i.e. people sell the hell out of it to get out of stable coins into fiat. So it depends. It depends. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Thank you. Uh, oh, come on. Uh, I'll get to you guys. Hold on because this... Oh, thank you for the super chat, Daniel Nelson. I appreciate the time, brother. I appreciate all-time highs. Yeah, we just keep getting it, man. This is crazy. 
this thing is just pumping. It's pumping, baby. We we, we got to love it, right? We got to love it. Uh, all right. Let's see. Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate it, man. Have a good one. Um, thank you, Hex Monkey. Have a good one. Yep. Pretty much, Finn Bear. Follow wrong type stuff for sure. For fucking sure. Peace out, David, man. Thank you for joining. I really appreciate your question earlier. I appreciate you guys coming in, man. Yeah, I wish, right? I wish I was that good. Thank you, Blue Bum. I appreciate you joining, man. Uh, no no worries, man. No worries. You can catch it in the flip side. Uh, so no worries at all. Thank you guys for joining. Um, yeah, let's hope so, right, Tony? Let's hope so. <laughs> Pedro, what's going on, bro? Uh, you know, thank you, everybody. Um, all about the hex was good. Was good. Thank you for coming through. Uh, yeah, you got to stack as much hex as possible, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, it's crazy, man. Yeah, it is a slow month. That's what I think. That's what I said as soon as it started happening. Um, it's exactly what it is. I think it's a slow motion crash. I mean, just look at this, right? It, it looked like it was going up and it had people fooled and it's just not. Um, that's not a price, positive price action. It's rolling over at the RSI again. Rolling over there at the zero again. Um, it's right in the supply zone area, right? Like all of those things add up into not a good look for price reversing. And this is just Ethereum. Let's look at Bitcoin. Even worse. Oof. Yeah, because it's right above. Look at this. It's right above the value area low, which is the edge of the standard deviation area of the bell curve where it is normal, right? Where you have a normal distribution ending. Right, the 61.8 area. So that means it should be an area of resistance, and it is, right? And this is the edge. So price should continue to go back further down. So we'll see. It'll be interesting. Uh, yeah, let's go back to the art, right? Nobody cares about the suckers. All time high. That's right, baby. And this was just minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> well, I appreciate the sentiment, man. Uh, you know, I'm just here to share, spread the knowledge, bro. Spreading the knowledge is really going to be how everybody life improves. It's, it's honestly the case. It really, really is. Um, thank you, Melf Tony. Again, this thing is just crazy. I, I, I mean, is my charges not updating? Cause maybe I'm not using the right one. Desktop vision. No, it seems to be right. All right. Well, I mean, it's great. 8.761, 8.712. Thank you, Hexagon, for coming through. Thank you, sir. Edwards, uh, Hexander, thank you as well. Uh, so let me put a little banner up so everybody can see. Um, let me edit it. Uh, so YouTube. So I'm going to put YouTube forward slash Wells only. Only uh, Telegram forward slash Wells only Twitter or slash Wells only one. All right, so that's where you can guys. That's where you guys can reach me at um, on YouTube at. YouTube.com forward slash Wells only telegram at t.me forward slash Wells only Twitter at twitter.com uh, forward slash Wells only one. Um, again, thank you guys, honestly, for joining the, the stream tonight. Um, <laughs> uh, I actually have talked about that before, but maybe I can do a stream just for that. Because um, the way I look at technical analysis and things are a little different. I've thought about doing that, but I don't want people to think that I'm trying to preach trading because I'm not. It'll just be more so so people understand how I look at things and uh, why I look at them the way I do. Because, you know, after 10 years of staring at charts, you kind of got to have a reason, right? So, yeah, thank you guys uh, for your time tonight. And thank you for all the super chat donations. They're very greatly appreciated because they're clearly not required. You guys are doing it by your own merit, and that is greatly appreciated. Uh, and as always, you guys got any questions, man, throw them in the chat, man. Throw them in the chat. 
you know, hit me up. You guys got my contacts here. <sighs> definitely, definitely let me know. And thank you for the Super Chat Crypto Learner. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Especially that it's in Euro, which means it's more than dollars. So thank you. <laughs> Uh oh yeah 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 I, man I've had ideas for so long that I honestly can't wait I can't wait because it's gonna be it's gonna be great um you know again we we're, we're the change we want to be we want to see so I'm already taking step one by just trying to share what I know um which you guys are receiving with open arms so thank you guys again um and you know I just I'm elated right I've been talking to myself for 20 years and I finally have people to talk to so. Thank you guys, man. Uh, honestly, you guys have a good night. Um, and again, any questions, you guys know where to reach.